Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday. It is. What day is it? March 27th. We're in day five of the Gwyneth Paltrow ski crash trial. This week on Quick Bits that's live on my short form channel, I did a breakdown of this trial and week one if you need to catch up. Today, the plaintiff is going to testify. However, there is a storm local to this court, so the jury is running a bit late, and the court is on the record dealing with an issue. So I'm going to give you the brief background of that, and then we're going to go at 1.25 and catch up to real time with the court. Here's the issue. Ages ago, there was a link to a meetup group and all of the attorneys could not figure out what to do with the link to this meetup group. They're like, the post is gone. And the internet was like, <laughs> no, it's not. So we've got about 20 minutes until they expect the jury to be there. And that gives us some time to see what they're putting on the record. Because now the interwebs has found the link to the meetup post. And these attorneys are going to have to prove that there's foundation for it. So they're arguing about whether or not that can come in. So that's where we're going to join the court. But first, of course, we are going to roll the intro. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And a huge thank you to B2 um, for gifting 63 memberships for their 63rd birthday. Cheers. And we appreciate you. The gift of memberships are such a gift to the community. So let me know where you're coming from. Hopefully the weather's not wild where you are and we are going to roll. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. So I'm experimenting with new layouts. So you guys have to let me know in the chat what we think of this layout, because I feel like you can see court and you can see me. So let's get going. This is at 1.25 until we catch up. That sounds terrible. The there we go. And uh, we provided yesterday a statement, we, an instruction we want given to the court. And those issues have been intermixed. So this is, this is the exhibit. This is the link on the exhibit that people have been showing the email uh oh but this is the only problem with this layout the day of the incident <laughs> let's see if i can fix Go that a separate issue. Issue. Link at the bottom of mr sanderson's email okay, so we've got we've got the the exhibit now or the results of that link we're in agreement that it, it uh -oh. come in but we, it is so super quiet and i gained so this volume up Shown. Oh, I don't know there if we you go. Can see this, Your Honor, but Whitney, it's the picture of Whitney with some description, which is actually the page you get to if you press the link. Um, at How did you verify page. that? You know, we'll, we can explain that once it was activated. And then, and then uh, another page, which you have to exit out of that picture with a little uh, caption, and it gives you another page that uh, includes a little event link that when you press that link, it goes to these comments. And so we think they, they should all go together to make a clear picture, but we're not- We like the uh, old layout better. Comments themselves. Well, we can't, there's no way we can get that done in time. Uh, we put him on first. And uh, if they want to supplement, and we'll stipulate that no one's at fault for this. You know? Every guy won't stipulate. <laughs> I don't know if we knew this. We'll stipulate that no one's at fault for not being able to click the link. And Owens is like, we will not stipulate. Of course you are. Uh, Mr. Sykes, but we may not be starting. We're not starting at nine. And we'll start at 915 if the jury's assembled. I'm not sure. They're not all here yet. Jurors assembled. Because of the snowstorm. So we've got a few minutes. We have uh, a few so, minutes. But, but in principle, do we agree on, on that, Mr. Sykes? In principle, they agree on agree nothing. It should come in. Um, it's kind of working out the logistics of how we want to bring that forward, I think, is where we might be. We had, I so you want me to, to instruct the jury that that, that it's been found? Well, we, no. we, had, we had a couple it's different accessed. ideas. I, I think that that is a very fine instruction, Your Honor. I think we had also thought about possibly having Terry log it in to the to the site. And no, don't we don't need to do that. that. Okay. We don't need to do that if, if this is already. And, and Judge, if they want to find that other page, we have no problem to that coming find in. Find it you know, then. Other page you have. Well, we just yeah, want to delay it because it's, we have it's five minutes. Matter of, you don't uh, have five minutes. I think then the statement that you would give to explain to the jury, we proposed one, and um, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that. That's something I didn't see. Let's okay. hand it. We have, uh, 
May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. They have a instruction that they want to give to the jury. The reason that Paltrow's team wants to give an instruction to the jury is because they made a big deal out of this in opening. Ah, that's not what I intended to do. I double clicked the wrong thing. Redondo Beach, um, coming in from near my hometown. These jokers give me courage to go to law school. They can do it, so can I. Do you mind if I read it, Your Honor, and then I'll add? Lawyer's ability to convey information well varies. Your mileage may differ. So they do need to explain. Propose the following statement. Members of the jury, I'm, go I'm going to tell you about a new piece of evidence. A viewer following the trial and familiar with finding archived website links investigated the link referenced on defendant's exhibit. 102, Mr. Sanderson's email to his daughters on the day of the accident. Through the viewer's efforts and expertise, he provided a functional link to defendant on Friday. That was two days ago. Uh, defendant immediately disclosed those documents to plaintiff and the court. And then this was the addition we just were thinking of adding. Plaintiff has since accessed the page through Terry Sanderson's meetup login. This link leads to, um, well, I guess that wouldn't be able to go right there, but that should be added somewhere. This would have been asked for in discovery. The fact that all of a sudden they logged into the plaintiff's meetup and then we're like, oh, now we're able to get it would piss me the fuck off if I was opposing counsel because all of this has been asked for. And then all of a sudden Sanderson's like, oh, I logged in and I was able to find it. And yes, I do think James looks exactly like Riley from National Treasure. Oh, I'd be so mad. Um, this link, the one that was provided by the um, person following the trial leads to a meetup.com post made by Mr. Sanderson and the associated pages of comments, which includes comments made by plaintiff and Mr. Ramon. Uh, oh, that were oh shit. Involved. Plaintiff and Ramon yeah. made comments. Oh, yes. bitch. Well, so I don't like that last time. Owen. I think it was previously available to them. Well, what I propose then is that you say, or that I say, that we're equally available to both sides. They weren't equally available, though. That's the insinuation they want. That's the biggest issue for us on the plaintiff's side is that we disclose this and disclose these links, and whether they were explored or not, I think it's moot at this point because we've now discovered there's additional evidence that I think it should be neutral. I don't think so why were they not equally available? Because he reactivated his password just days ago. And so? Brought That's up. not accurate, Your Honor. I'd you like to hear it from Mr. Owens. Go ahead, Mr. Owens. In chambers, they said. Oh, I tell me. Repeat that, but, but why, why was it not equally available to both sides if, tell me. if this um, tech geek, for lack of a better word, was able to find it? The internet found it, it in se Your Honor, the internet found it in seven seconds. Their password. So this person that contacted defense counsel had their password? No. Okay. James is sitting there going, don't argue, Owen. Don't argue. I don't know if he reactivated the meetup group or not, but James is like, that's not right. That's not right. They typed in the link. The link couldn't be clicked. These attorneys... When they're like, oh, we clicked the link and we couldn't get it. Uh, did you type it into a browser? Because that's what the internet did. The chat accessed this link in literally seven seconds by, by typing in the numbers. Not clicking it. The link would not click through. Owens is a whole vibe this morning and I'm, I'm gosh, it's too early for me to be this annoyed. It seems like coffee with yet. computer forensics, either side could have accessed that link. Yes. A hundred times to I realize that. that. Well, you tried that, wrong. It seems that it was equally available or equally unavailable to both sides. It was very difficult. The I judge is what right. What happened is Terry reactivated his account a few days ago, and then did that reactivate the, the meetup group? That's fair. Was able then to access the. Uh, and how, how so if he reacted the meetup group, that's fair. If the actor group, if the meetup group was deactivated and then he reactivated it and the internet found it, then that's fair. So that, How do we know this? Do you have a computer expert that's going to say that? Yep. Reddit. They're going to call Reddit to the I mean, stand. That's, that's the crux right there. If there's no facts to back up that, that might be a defense theory, but besides just pure speculation and supposition, there's no computer expert it that is will a say lot of supposition. that somehow logging in under Mr. Sanderson's credentials reactivated anything. Well, and, and through and, and if you're and even if that were true, Mr. Owens, um, through discovery, you could have asked for that. I did in writing, and well, De Deer Valley did. 
Give us all photos this like isn't that. the time, though, to, to fight that battle. Yep. I'm, ding, ding. I, we're dealing with something that came about Friday morning at 10.30 uh, sir? a.m. So, sir. There's, so, so it's simple for them. It wasn't simple for us. You know you haven't been able to access the link for four fucking years. Come on now. I'm not convinced that it was simple for them. I don't have facts before me to, to, to say that it was simple for them. This is out because it came to us and we disclosed it. Right. To this day, they didn't get it. Um, this idea that it's it's all equal, I, I, I don't agree. And I think they're going to argue because they told me they would on Friday that Mr. Owens in opening said this is the most important evidence. And look, here it is. And without some statement, like a viewer you did say contacted that Mr. Owens' office, my office, and we immediately disclosed it, then it looks like I've lied to the jury in opening, Your Honor. That's what, exactly what they're available. going to try to do. You can agree on, and maybe the availability Nothing. comment just isn't part of the court's instruction. Just, I just give them the facts that on Friday, a viewer of this trial was, you know, basically sent a copy of the document that Don't they were able the to internet obtain through internet archives and got it to the defense counsel, and the defense counsel then disclosed it to the court and to plaintiff's counsel. Mr. Sykes? How about just saying, it's just totally neutral. This has since been discovered, no one is at fault. No, uh, they're not going to say no one is at fault. Way, I'd be surprised if they did. By the way you would answer, you know. well, if you could give me that additional language that this you is believe over two that pictures you had agreed on, and I'll on just look up. at it and I'll make a decision. I understand Mr. Owen's position that he doesn't want um, nobody's at fault, or it was equally available or equally unavailable. Diana, I recapped it right at the I'll beginning of stream, and I'll do it again. All of the proposals and and give them an instruction. And that defendant found it. I think oh, that's in the language. for fuck's sake! Not that you found it, but that someone sent it to you. And we immediately disclosed it. Yeah. Owens. Uh, okay. But, but that's trying to get some benefit from us. I'm saying that <coughs> it should be neutral. Well, I'll, I'll take that into account. And what I want to do is disclose to the jury the facts of what happened so that they can understand it. So there'll be there'll be some information about that in there. There's still a viewer, found, a viewer found it. It's been produced. And here it is. Why is every okay. attorney talking? We immediately disclosed it. Or Why is all of the bench default? talking? If you, if the viewer found it. We have it. Here it is. And Owens is saying it doesn't exist, but here it is. But it was Owens who just found it and disclosed it. Uh, so I didn't find it, but uh, obtained it. I think we've. He's okay, worried because of his opening. Get out on that issue. Plaintiff's exhibits one through what? Forty-three. Is it forty-four? Uh, 44. The parties will is be there in court. Agreement on this. Right before the jury comes in. Some objections, Your Honor. Um, we filed some, and I, I should pull up the. This judge um, is very patient. This is our objections from before, not recently filed. Right. I've got that here. Um, the, the, maybe the first okay. things we should address are those some of those end exhibits, which include some literature that. This uh, is a was big deal for the, them. The this is a really big Fong's deal this morning. Talking about it couldn't be shown. That's forty one and forty two. So you guys, Can this is order, one of my new layouts. Thirty nine. Uh, Owen, stop I complaining to James. Plaintiff's lawyers. Oh my God, leave James right. alone. You have thirty nine. Protect James at all costs. I don't have anything right now, and I'm looking for the objections. Just give me a moment. So we've got have a list of some people. options. I think this is difficult because I get covered up by the comments. You have a list of exhibits that can be admitted that this you're not objecting to. Is a little bit better. So would it make sense, Mr. Uh, Sykes to introduce the exhibits that there are not objections to right sure, now? Sure. And, and we will withdraw any effort to admit the literature. We were going to use it to, not to admit And that's it. just we're me a little smaller. Part of the witness. Yeah. I but think we'll, I like we'll this one. We'll draw that, so no, no literature comes so that's 41 and 42 withdrawn. Your, your Honor, um, this binder they've given us, 1 through 30. Oh, do a poll. Eight. These are authentic documents, but some have not been referenced. So I don't think they just I'll get do a, poll. a ream of paper. Uh, many of the documents of which have not been referenced in the trial. They haven't rested yet, so perhaps we have to extend this conversation um, until after they rest, because now they're calling two witnesses. So I guess if there's a motion to admit Ooh. exhibits, and some of those exhibits you're now withdrawing, uh, perhaps you could. So this is Emily a little a bigger. Motion. This is Court a Mr. little bigger. That would identify those exhibits that you're moving to admit. Okay, um, but Your Honor, uh, plaintiff would move to uh, admit. Plaintiffs exhibits one through 40. Court. And 44. And 44. Me. One through 40 and 44. On, on number 44, I just looked at it. I think there's one little redaction that needs to happen. There's a cell phone number. Who's talking? I'll probably redact that out of yeah. one of the comments. Okay. 
and then who was that the talking position on one through 40 and 44 y so, yes you uh, should redact it 33 is dr Fong's records and there are fmri records that she didn't speak to and um i think those should not be admitted. i can try to see if i'm upper corner though i block I, people testimony in the objection we filed i believe i noted each of those particular pages within this way tends to block people which is her records okay that need to be this way would removed. block face um, up up in the corner would block faces <laughs> 33 from our list okay so 33 is withdrawn you can try it this way but it looks What's weird the next to me. exhibit where there's an issue your honor 39 is not uh i think uh, to be clear eric christensen was deposed it was over Zoom. Let's give you a copy. What is happening? Oh right, we're gonna go with this for now. Because the, there's too many attorneys arguing. Well, I guess I don't have. I'll go back to Gamer Streamer Vibes later. This attorney looks so pissed. Your Honor, we have the actual easel that was used during Eric Christensen's deposition, so it's not a photograph. It's the actual page that he, uh, Eric Christensen was directing this. Yes. Sure. This is my copy. So we have that actual exhibit. Paltrow is. Oh, actual, there's a. That's an interview room. So it's not a mirror. It's a two-way because that's an interview right. room back there. That's not, that's not correct. Correct. So Eric if you Christensen. see the back of the courtroom, so, Gwyneth Paltrow uh, just Eric walked Christensen into the back of there's a far the courtroom. There's a room with a two-way window back there. So that's not a mirror. And, um, that makes sense. A lot of courtrooms I worked at had interview rooms back there. you? Why don't we hold 39 in advance to see if it gets admitted okay. through the witness? Confirmed by Eric Christensen in his deposition. That's the one we used. Confirmed by Eric Christensen in his deposition what? Uh, exhibit 39. He was uh, directing me to, I said, is this the point where you were at the moment of the crash? And he said yes. And I, I said, okay, I'll draw a circle. And he confirmed that the circle with his initials is what, what he did. I guess I'll have to see what how the evidence comes out because him saying Things said at the deposition don't necessarily mean they're going to be said here. Right. And it's what's said here on the record right. that matters. So. A oh, one-way mirror. One way. You can kind of see it. 43 is not one of the exhibits they want to admit. Only for, only for lesser good purpose. I'll use it in closing argument. But there's a title on there that now appears that was not authorized by the court. Executive functioning has been put at the top. That's nowhere on the document. That, you know, that's the page before. It's in the last column, to the right. Is this added to the? Oh, we did. We took the middle out, like you suggested. They're going over yeah, more exhibits. Were they added, or were they part of the original? Yeah. Uh, let me show you. <laughs> so they're still going over exhibits. And right, I'm going to check on y'all's poll. Court a little bigger. That's not it. Wrong direction. This way. There we go. Can you ask the bailiff to let us know what all? All right. When I'm talking, I'll go a little bit bigger, and we'll switch between the two. Um, this is the court talking to court staff, so it mutes the mics. Uh, which is kind of marked up, but executive function is on the far right side and very small type, but they've put a title on the entire thing. If, if I could coach Judge, what was the original? Exhibit page number. 19. Of Goldstein's uh, report. Okay, come on in. Come on over. So they're going through the exhibits that are going to be coming in. It seems that the plaintiff is going to be calling another witness this morning. We anticipated that the plaintiff was going to call. Well, I mean, I think it's fine. Himself. For a argument. It's, but they're going it's just, to call uh, someone else. A, a tool to use during closing arguments. And now they're going through closing arguments. Why? We're not even there yet. Can he say at least I put the title on it? Well, it's here. Just clarify that, that that the words at the top are your heading, Mr. Sykes. Just clarify. I mean, the jury may remember that uh, that chart. So just say, well, I put these words up here so that it would be clear. So this, the words under executive functioning are not these words. This is very results are being. Oh, my so goodness. So, so, no, 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 no. I know, but I'm saying that title isn't immediately this document. It sounds like the judge says all, all, when he uses it, he has to say, I put this title. Okay. So I will put up another poll. I'm going by the poll. The poll said court a little bit bigger. 
All right. These lawyers are on 1.25. The jury is coming in late today due to a snowstorm. They weren't all there yet, and so they're hammering out some court issues. We have a copy of if you're ready to move on to a new topic. Are there any other of the plaintiff's exhibits? Are there any issues with 1 through 40 or 44? Minus 33. So if referenced, if not referenced in the whole tri trial thus far, they shouldn't go in. So because they haven't rested. You'll have to you'll have to identify the ones that were not referenced. Yep. And you're gonna have to wait so until they rest. Okay. Because it's been they've been moved for admission. I think it I think it may be confusing to the jury if exhibits are where haven't been referenced during the trial and then all of a sudden they show up as exhibits. So right. I think it's a valid objection. I just need to know which ones you're identifying. Okay. And since they haven't rested, I can't answer that. Right, because they haven't rested. Does counsel really want me to go through each medical record and authenticate that? No, but if an entire exhibit has not been this referenced is in trial, I don't want it. And it sounds like the judge doesn't want it. Standard. What that means is that we have to waste court time going through each one and ask Terry, is this your record? Yes. Is this yeah, your record? Yeah, you do. Yes. I mean, I don't know why we can't stipulate to that. I don't either. I mean, I don't either. If, 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 you, if your proffers, Mr. Sanderson would, I mean, can you just have Mr. Sanderson click off all the, can you just go through them all real quickly with him? Yeah, but I mean, it's just going to take 10 minutes. Or could we do a lump sum, one through? I think you can do it lump sum. If you can, I mean, it's not really an authentication. Patro is back in the back of the courtroom. to the jury as to what it, what it is. I mean, we that is a before the trial to It looks like an interview room at the back of the courtroom. That everything is deemed authenticated that comes from the VA, et cetera. This is very standard. I don't know why we're standard. on that honorable stipulation at this point. I just want to be, Steve, I just need to be clear on what it is that you're mm -hmm. having an issue with all of a sudden. For instance, uh, this wasn't an issue. Right now, they are fighting over exhibities I'm and what comes in. I'm what the judge said, which it would be confusing to the jury if a re record is never uh, referenced in the trial and, and then suddenly in the jury room back. with that. The experts reviewed all of the medical records, Your Honor, and they've testified as to that. The jury is not here. And that's what's contained in the exhibits. So they they were referenced. They weren't referenced page by page. Thank you for grabbing the mic. Date, that's but they helpful. were given copies of all of the records. It's they've testified to that. It's in the reports. I'll tell you what, Honor, Your Honor, because we, we do want to start on time. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll do it as long as they do it for ours. Of course. That's fine. Okay. So one plaintiffs one through 32, 34 through 40, and 40. Um, well, let me let me just restate that. So plaintiffs one through thirty-two are received. Plaintiffs thirty-four. They're going over the exhibits being received. received. Plaintiffs forty is received, and plaintiffs forty-four is received. So that excludes the Fong records thirty-three, and it excludes uh, the, the uh, exhibit thirty-nine, which is which may be introduced later. Does that sound correct? And uh, forty-three, I can only use it during. Ah! Forty-three is a demonstrative exhibit that you could that use was during closing. My error. Portions of thirty-three. Yeah, the 33 is already out. They've, they've uh, withdrawn 33. Are there fMRI references in 34 also? I don't believe so. I mean, there may be references uh, to... That's part of the issue. Uh, Dr. Fong did an fMRI, but it doesn't have Dr. Fong's fMRI um, evaluation, I don't believe. But... Okay, so the court will receive plaintiffs 1 through 32, 34 I'm going to zoom them up a little faster so we can catch up to real time. As exhibits. Yes, Your Honor. All right, turning now to... This proposed order, um, I haven't read the proposed order. Is there, an, is there an issue with the proposed order or an objection to it on the animations? Yes. This was produced weeks ago. This is not regarding GoPro video. This is regarding the meetup link. To wait until trial. We've moved on. what the evidence shows, and then we can object just before. We've moved on to accident reconstruction animations and an order regarding them. Objection. Have them just pop up on the screen. So we're. Yeah, sure. Let's take the order real quickly. Carol, I, mean, I see your I question in the chat. I'm going to grab that later. As I recall from your instruction after the evidentiary hearing. Sure. I have a physical copy if you want one. So they are asking for an order regarding the accident reconstruction animations. Little Red, this feed does not have closed captions, unfortunately. Um, and once we get caught up to live, it won't have live captions. But order. you can um, caption on device. Address the issues that you just raised, Mr. Bueller. In other words, they're not going to flash the animations up before they're admitted. There Correct. Has to be a sponsoring witness. They're not going to. They're not going to just admit them. Is it the, uh, on page three? Yes. The, uh, 
top uh, four lines. So they're all that being part of the decision. Going through the order. Uh, page three, top four lines. Against the tide, they did say the jury was coming in late due to the storm. So thank you for the the weather update. My mistake. Um, I think trudging a little bit more to court with chains on would be difficult. I can find my notes. So they anticipated the jury being late this morning. Oh, I am getting near crackling. I don't know where that's from. Mr. Dior. Sorry, y'all. If you can hear it too. What the witness. The defense would have to do but that's coming out of the court feed testify before it would be admitted so i, I may edit this, and, more detail, but this is what i would oh, something in these lines audio uh, there must be sufficient evidence to support the defense claim that the that an animation accurately reflects a witness testimony and it means uncontested facts all right that i'm going to smooth this out a little at 1.25 the animation accurate, accurately reflect freaking the witness's painful. testimony so it doesn't have to, it's not meant to prove what happened. It's proved as a demonstrative of a witness's testimony. This feed. Your Honor just mentioned. Yeah, it's the storm. I will take a look at it. But yeah, this is, I made some notes this morning. I went back and listened to the WebEx hearing on it. And I will insert. Is the jury all assembled? Okay, the jury's not quite all assembled yet, so let's take a short recess while we wait. For the jury to be completely assembled. I do have one more issue, but oh, Owens, he wants to take one. a break. Okay, so we produced a poor quality screenshot of um, the text right after when one said, "I that guy kind of hurt me," and we have a high quality now, okay. and so. I'd like to have a jury instruction conference tomorrow. Um, I need you to tell me when, if it'd be better to have it at lunch or at the end of the day tomorrow. Jury so instruction conference that, just means they're going to go after the, back go me. over the jury Thank instructions. You. All right, the court's taking a brief break. Thank the Lord. Um, hopefully we will be able to not just catch up to where we're at in real time, but smooth out some of the audio issues that we've been having. Perfect. We are now in real time caught up. I'm going to make this small and go to some of your questions. Yikes. So we are waiting for the jury to come back in this morning. Um, that sound was getting painful. There is a storm locally to this courtroom, and that is going to be part of it. I'm going to get to questions. So with all of it, we are now caught up. Here's what happened this morning. Oh, I should swoop a doop, and then we'll get to some questions. Swoop. Here's what happened this morning. There is still a fight over the email that says I'm famous. And the I'm famous email had a link to a meetup group post. The attorney Owens, who is Paltrow's attorney, said an opening. And now that link can't be found. Well, they've now accessed that link. The court audio is still cut. They've now accessed that link. And so now that they've accessed that link, they want to admit the comments from the meetup post. It's clear that the link is a meetup post and two photographs connected to the meetup post and then comments under it. So it's, um, it's a meetup post, like a Facebook post with comments and what have you. Some comments by the witness, some comments by the plaintiff. Counsel is saying, Counsel Owens is saying, I... We could never access this. And then Sanderson reactivated his meetup account and now we can activate it or reactivated his password and now we can activate it and the internet found it. The plaintiff is saying, well, you've had it this whole time. So what they were arguing about was what the jury will be told about why this was told that it didn't exist, why it was this critical piece of evidence that was missing that's what Owen said in opening. And now all of a sudden, woo, the internet has found it, right? So why, why is this all of a sudden now available? And that's the instruction that they were fighting over. The jury has to be told something, but what are they going to be told? The defendant was arguing it needs to be 
neutral or the plaintiff was arguing it needs to be neutral. No one's at fault. This isn't anyone's that nobody was hiding anything. And no one's like, well, then that makes me look like a liar because I told them it didn't exist. So Owens wants it to be that the defense had this and didn't give it to him. And they were like, no, we gave you the link on and on and on. So that's what's happening with the meetup link that was in the I'm famous email. Then they moved on to other issues. They started talking about um, exhibits that had not been referenced by plaintiff and not admitting those to the jury, what needed to be redacted and didn't. And then when they're going to have the, um, when they're going to have the conference regarding, uh, Paltrow's completely changed her trial style. I wonder if the internet had a role in that, but then, um, they had a conference regarding when they're going to have jury instructions. I don't know why Owens has a mask on all of a sudden. He didn't this morning. Paltrow is now in court. Um, it means that the jury is probably going to be in court soon. I'm sure at some point he, right, there's going to be a complaint that you're only allowed to focus on the speaking party. Gwyneth Paltrow is not speaking, so she should not be on camera while sitting at counsel table. The plaintiff is now in court. Plaintiff is going to be testifying this morning. So with all of that said, I'm going to get to some of your questions and we will go from there. But I am getting snap, crackle, pops in my ear from the court audio. So I'm going to keep that audio low so it's not too bad. Today is going to be a struggle bus kind of a day. We're just all in it together. Look, there's 23,000 of you here. We're ready to hear what this plaintiff has to say. You always make this the number one place to watch trials on YouTube. And I appreciate you, Lonards. Thank you. Um, Bad Biscuit said, whoa, it's like they're really there. I'm not sure what that was referring to, but okay. Um, Matt Bond says, hello, my spiffy legal mumbo jumbo talkie friend. I sent you an instant message about a tax fraud case you might be interested in. Thank you. Um, and we're going to be putting up some places in our members um, spaces for that. My public email is the really the best way. I don't always see my DMs, especially when I'm in trial. But my public email, if you have something you want me to look at that's on all of my socials, is really the easiest the easiest way to go because I can sort those. I will open my DMs and then forget what I'm doing and stuff gets lost much easier. I can't sort it and flag it and put it in folders. DMs are hard to organize. There's a lot of them. Question, Emily, have you said often... You have said often that you don't pay taxes on settlements. I found several articles, even on the IRS site, saying that you do pay taxes and for the entire settlement amount. It depends on the settlement. Often there are not taxes on settlements. It depends on the type of case. This is why you go to attorneys. When Tom Girardi was telling his clients that they needed to pay taxes on their settlements and that's why they weren't being paid, it was a lie. Seashell this morning said, what's the point of this, Emily? As I briefly talked about in our recitation um, or our little summary there, what this matters is who out, is going to be out. told that they're at fault. Which jury instruction issue? Thank you. Sorry to be vague. Uh, Why do you have a mask on all of a sudden? With the disclosed comments section, if they're going to use that with Terry, then I would like the instruction read that this came through. Uh, defense counsel. The you comments know, might be. It's defense counsel of this and, and the clerk that we are going to call Craig Ramon for five minutes to do the confirmation of the, of the uh, comments. Oh, they're the calling Ramon front. back okay. to the stand. And can I see the stipulated statement, that instruction that the court will be giving the jury concerning Exhibit 44? This is what they were arguing about this morning. I have that drafted or printed out, but uh, it was the neutral statement that. And we'll get to that in a minute, Amber. Uh, I need specific language if there's an agreement. Otherwise, I'll just do my own. Yeah, if, what you said orally, you know, 15 minutes ago was fine. What we, we're requesting what's in your, in your filing? Well, I think Your Honor mentioned that you would keep it neutral and just mention. Um, uh, Should I consider your arguments, but I'll have to go through the language and make a decision. Um, right. So, uh, should we uh, handwrite it? Marie, I'm glad you're here. Now since we last met, you know, 15 minutes ago. We handed you the, set, the paragraph we want. Right. What I've got here? Yeah, except, except for the last sentence. Well, the last part of the last sentence that were previously unavailable to either party. 
I, I think I think the simplest Exhibit 44 was found uh, by a the crackling's awful. third party, and both parties are agreeing that uh, this is an authentic copy of what was found. And then um, Craig Bone, who we're going to call right now, will go through that and confirm his comments. We we'll write it up in about three minutes if you want to do that, Judge, by hand. I think I've got enough. I can probably craft something right here. Lynn, I'm happy to be here to be a distraction. To talk. I think I know all your arguments. Thank you. Jill J, yeah, there is a different tone for sure. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, there's this docket is extensive, but this case was filed in 2019. There was lots of motions. There were motions at summary judgment. It's been pretty extensive. All right, the court is looking at what they're gonna tell the jury. Why does it matter? Well, Owens made a big deal of this not existing in opening statement. The plaintiff doesn't want it to seem like it's their fault because they provided the link. So this is a very big deal. If you guys are like, what do lawyers do all day? This kind of arguing back and forth to the court is some of the most important work in trial. So I think what I'm going to do is these rulings is, matter I'm read a something lot. on the fly, and I'm going to ask that the parties and counsel not embellish any of the facts concerning what I'm about to read to the jury. Okay. He looked at Owens. Did you see him go? Mr. Owens, you agree? Okay. Mr. Owens. Ready for the jury. So they're waiting for the jury. All right. With over 24,000 of you here, don't forget to do the YouTube things. Um, yes. So we're going to just wait while the court finishes that. Y'all, those of you that have commented on my hair, yes, I did news uh, this morning. So I was on CBS this morning talking about this case. So the hair, the hair tends to get tends to get freshened up a little bit for television appearances most of the time, not all of the time. We're ready to bring the jury, but they're not there but they're not there yet. So I'm going to um, continue getting to questions. Questions, are all court proceedings that chaotic? Both sides look like they are unprepared. They're, some of this they're dealing with on the fly. So they did it in a pretty orderly fashion, but during trial, these things do come up. Um, hello, George. These things do come up on the fly and you have to deal with them on the fly. I don't know how stressful their morning drive-in was, it seems that there was a substantial amount of snow in the area. So these attorneys might be dealing with quite a lot. Um, so with all of that, I'm going to show you something that is new while we're waiting on the court. Y'all, y'all, speaking of bring the jury, we finally added our bring the jury merch to the Law Nerd Shop at LawNerdShop.com. We have... The mug, the stickers, we will be adding the bigger mugs, don't you worry. The I Have Questions hoodies in purple and the Lawnard hoodies in purple are available. The Lawnard embroidered with the pink Good heart. morning, members of the jury. The much asked for I Have Questions I sticker. That you're traveling in this morning was so safe. And, these uh, everyone got are all okay. available now. Um, the the weather outside is frightful still winter i guess but the fire is so delightful well, um there is a new piece of evidence in this case i'm going to tell you about that yes they can <clears throat> cancel court if it's unpassable they did not do that today out of the courtroom and familiar with finding archived website links investigated the link referenced on defendant's they just found exhibit the link. 102. that's the mr sanderson email to his daughter's on the day of the accident, there's a, there a link at the bottom of that page. Well, this viewer, through their efforts and expertise, through, through that, we now have a copy of what was contained in that link. And the link! It. it is going to be the an exhibit. Link! It's Plaintiff's Exhibit 44 and Defendant's Exhibit 102. Plaintiff's Exhibit 44 and Defendant's Exhibit 102. And the parties do agree that this new exhibit is authentic. Lawyers really do suck at technology. Not all lawyers. A lot of lawyers suck at technology. All right. 
We are finally you, in front Honor. of the jury at 934 uh, court time. Re recalls Craig Ramon. Craig Ramon back on the stand to talk about his comments in the meetup group. Mr. Ramon, you'll need to be sworn in again as a witness. It's a new day. A new opportunity. Right I imagine this will be short. Or brief, I should say. Um, do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give in the matter before the court to, to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Thank you. Good morning. Excuse me for the yawns. George, what are you doing? Seashell, thank you so much. That's very kind. I, ADHD is, in fact, a superpower. Good morning, Mr. Ramon. Good morning. Uh, George. I've handed you uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 44. Have you had a chance <laughs> to review that before? Savannah, no. Yes. Mountain time, mountain time. <laughs> 9.30 lo this, court uh, local time. This are the comments. Explain your time zone, court local time. New, com new and time postings zone. postings on court uh, local time. meetup.com. Meet Why that correct? did you say meetup so yes. weird? Meet up. And uh, this was the uh, uh. website that you used to meet up with the other skiers on the day of the crash, correct? Yes. That's how meet up works, sir. They have not and, found uh, the GoPro footage. First, I'd like to this turn is the you to meet page up two of Exhibit 44, link. Plaintiff's Exhibit 44. This is the meet up link. And on the lower left, you see the color photograph of the woman smiling? Yes. Is that the ski patroller? that uh, you met on the day of the crash? I'm, 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 I'm guessing it is. He has no okay. idea. You have it on page two? Uh, uh, oh, yes, that's, yeah, I believe that's her. That, that's Whitney Smith that you met that day? Yes. Oh, show it, sorry. <laughs> Everybody just like pitches in. It's you so see, strange. Lower left of uh, exhibit uh, it's so strange. Two. Yes. Okay. Everybody's just like, do this, do that. It's just odd to me. And you made a few postings on this meetup.com website, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm going to read some of the, your postings on that day. I want to hear what and, his comments uh, so are. I'm going to reference some of the pages. you turn to page four of nine. The page numbers are on the bottom right. So, in, do you see page four of nine? Four yeah, of yes. Nine? Okay. There's only one link, the one link to the meetup comment that was in the email, the I'm famous email. The I'm famous email had a link to a meetup group, like thread. And that was the link that was set and nobody could find it. And the internet was like, oh, and then found it in seven seconds. Okay. Ashley Steele, no, 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 no. Meetup.com is, um, is first for comment stuff like this, ski uh, groups. Like, four. I'm just hey, we're a ski group. Ask you to confirm that this is what you uh, it's, uh, posted. Uh, people use um, it locally for park groups before we start and that, stuff like that. You'll see it says craft groups. It's to meet other people days to ago. do photography or hike or whatever. Is, you know, and this was probably before the ski crash. Uh, no, not probably. Day, correct. It's I'm not, I'm not sure. Exactly. Okay. So I'm, sitting, I'm I'm guessing it was probably. Two thousand five hundred and eighty-eight um, days ago. It was it was right around. So it's for social meetings. Oh, uh, which which one you're talking about? I'm sorry. The uh, one in the middle of the page. Um, I'll just yeah, just give your valley your pass. Yes, that's okay, that's so true. You, you you wrote or typed in that day. Just give Deer Valley your pass. They have your photo. It will be a great day. I will be on the hill at 930. That's uh, your Meet first posting. allows you to form day, groups of believe. people to go do things together. Uh, yes. So local okay. groups, social, at the bottom, social meetings, the Pokemon Go groups, craft groups, hike groups, park groups. You have another post. I'm sure there's archery meetups. Holy shit. What is the blue box? Well, maybe. Um, so this is the meetup link under this event. Well, let's see. I they have no like idea what they're reading. A different one, maybe. Fuck, this is painful. Well, 
Y'all so had all weekend. Day. What were you doing? Uh, sleeping? I'm going to move to the, the next one. The uh, It's a joke because when you're in page. trial, you sleep very little. Ugh. Uh, six of nine. Can you go there? Uh, Jamie G, I've never seen that happen. The question is, have you ever had a witness refuse to swear to God? But I also worked in California where it's, do you swear to tell okay, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the uh, truth? And then it's, so help you God. In the middle, um, um, says, Scott. But I've never seen anyone Terry was say not no. doing the man thing. Terry had a bad hit to the head. You do not have the ski patrol take you down the hill if you have a pain in your ass. Is that what you typed that day? Was yes, Terry being is. a pain in the ass? This is the day of the crash. Is Terry regularly a pain in the ass? Uh, this is a few days after. Okay. What is the man thing? Then at the bottom of that, page six, and we're gonna continue to seven, it has your name, and then it continues on to page seven. This is a I'm disorganized read you what, mess. Uh, page seven says. Scott, the thing you did not see was Terry was knocked out cold. Bad hit to the head. Not, sh not too sure if Terry has broken ribs. I did see the hit. Terry did not know his name. I asked Terry what his name was, and he did not know. Scott, it scared the hell out of me. Is, is that what you typed up? True. And that was on or around the uh, day of the crash, or after the crash? That was a little bit after, a few days after the crash. Okay. <clears throat> then at the bottom of page seven, we have another comment. <clears throat> do you see that? Yeah, yes, I do. And, uh, you typed, Scott, thanks for the humor. I got it when you were trying to make light of the whole thing. You guys did not see what I did see. No need to say you're sorry. You typed that, correct? Yes, I did. Then the final page, page eight of nine. Okay, page and eight under of nine. Your name it says, you cannot make this up. Gwyneth took out Terry last week. Last Saturday, her son broke his arm skiing at Park City. Gwyneth was staying at the Montage. She took her plane out of Million Air Airport. I wish I did know so many people. What makes me mad is that Gwyneth took out Terry and just took off. Is that what you typed that? Yes, is that it is. the week after the crash? Yes, it is. They're introducing this because it's consistent okay, and, uh, with his testimony. I, except for the uh, that's why uh, they're introducing irrelevant it. stuff at the end on page nine. Uh, that's all I have. These are prior out of court statements. Who is very T in Exhibit Forty Four, plaintiff's exhibit? That the very T is mentioned. Both parties want to have admitted. So. Do you remember? Um, I'm not sure who Ver Barry T is. It's a meetup group. I'm sure he doesn't know who everyone is. Could it be Terry Sanderson? That is leading. Okay. Yeah. Um, Why don't you look at the Barry T comments and see if it. Re re there's no question. Ask your next question. Pending. Yeah. Um. What? The attorneys are now arguing at council table because you can hear them chatting with each other. This is riveting. Um, this is how court is a lot. Whether or not Very T is Sanderson doesn't matter at the moment. It matters whether or not this witness knows that. Sanderson's going to testify. He can just say that that's him later. Okay. Craig, would you go to page two of this Exhibit 44? Rabbit, you're welcome. I feel like we've been pulled in. I was just going to cover Paltrow's testimony and Sanderson's testimony, but here we are. And now we're just, now we've 
we've decided to take a ski vacation to a very stormy Utah, and now we're here mm -hmm. for a few days. On the left, it says Very T, event organizer. You yes. see that? Yes, I do. And also, two over, it says Kurt L, event organizer. They're trying to walk groups. him through it logically. I don't think it fucking matters. That? Yes, I do. Was Kurt L at the uh, meetup group at Deer Valley on the day How of the crash? How does he know? Yeah, Kurt was the one who organized that day. Okay. Everybody said Terry left. did. Terry has and, not testified uh, yet. Look at Very T. Are you able to recognize the photo um, above Very T? It looks like looks like Terry, and Terry was the one who organized the uh, the, the meetup groups up at Alta. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Mr. Bueller. Mr. Egan? Mr. Egan. James! Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ramon, good to see you again. I was hot in my office I earlier. I have a couple questions from the defense. Um, so I need Dr. Peter Bernays. The first would be, at the start of this page, and I haven't used this uh, Elmo projector before, so give me a second. Do you see? Do you see that that uh, uh, on page two? Got it. Thank you. I have to press focus. Okay, there you are. So me all you the You see time. that there's some photos there at the bottom of the page. Yes. And do you recognize the the photo there of the ski patroller? Yes. Was that Whitney Smith? I believe so. The ski patroller who responded. To also, Mr. there's a Sanders picture of Terry that. under Very T. And how hard is this uh, to determine? During the like an actual picture, the first aid clinic visit that he had there on the ski, ski hill. Yes. And uh, I do not see any videos there. Were there any, to your memory, GoPro or other videos posted on this web page? No. And then. Um, and, and I believe uh, you're unaware of any GoPro footage at all, is that correct? Yes. And then if you go to page, let's match it up with mine here, page seven. Um, Actually, your name is cut off at the top there. So if you look back at page I six, think this, can you see the that it shows is not your name to be called back into this, and then goes on to page to seven, court, where there's at the and, very top there a um, uh, to, note had that to you wrote. Is that right? some treacherous weather yes. this morning as okay. well. Okay, and in that note, you write, Terry did not know his name. I asked Terry what his name was, and he did not know. But I believe you have told the jury last week that he did remember his name. Trying to screenshot it was, that. He had to really think hard about it. It took like four or five seconds for him to, to remember his but name. But he did say his but name. That's not what you wrote here. You wrote here, Terry did not know his name. When I first asked him, he, he didn't know his name. He had to really think about it. I asked Terry what his name was, and he did not know. Yeah, he, he, when I asked him, he, Those he are didn't, two didn't different know things. his name, and then he, he just took some time to kind of just think about it. And then he, We're working on it. You know, after about four or five seconds, he just said, Terry. Okay. What? Okay. So what you wrote here is not what you told the jury last week. Is that fair to say? And that's the point of these questions. Um, it's not exactly the same. Could you please repeat that? Just Sir, he, here in your note, you do of not it. say that he did later remember Sir. his name. You just say he didn't remember it all. And as I understand it, that was different than what you told the jury last re week. Is that correct? Yes. When I when he I does when I was when not I like being was, pinned down on inconsistencies on about, cross about this, I didn't go into much detail. You know, on on this, I was just making a point that he was having a hard time knowing what his name was. Okay, so let's go to. This He's like, I was page, adding page, emphasis well, I guess for meetup. There's a kind of blank page at the end, but page eight, the last page with your comments on it. This witness was the witness from the first day of trial who says he saw the you accident that is being top, contested, but yes. Another one of your comments. He's 
had a lot of um, inconsistencies. Okay. Yeah, it is hard to see. He kind of big fishes things. Chat, y'all are making me smile. I'm learning old technology. I appreciate this. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. Um, James, don't sass In this court. comment, that I'm learning you wrote, old correct, technology. This, this you Damn wrote, it, James. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, and in this comment, you wrote Coming Gwyneth took out elbow. Terry last week. <laughs> last Saturday, her son broke his arm skiing at Park City. How did you know that? There's a lady I know that works at Alta, or, I mean, works at Snowbird and Deer Valley. She works up at the Montage. Deer Valley, and um, and she told me. Okay, and then everybody Gwyneth was all up in Gwyneth's at the business, montage. Huh? How did you know that? That's what she told me. And why were you talking to her about Gwyneth? Uh, she just because that's what we were talking. She about. knew what happened, and then she told me that what Could, happened. Sorry, she, that's she, not she, clear to me. So she, she she knew what happened. She 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 knew because we were all uh, gossiping about it. Took out took out Terry and so then when I saw her because we were all gossiping about it just be honest it would it would work better one, that, that that's what happened but she wasn't there at the collision right no she just worked up up at the hotel just so say because it's have any knowledge of it I have no idea just because it's Gwyneth fucking she Paltrow. took her plane out of millionaire airport how did you know about Miss Gwyneth or Miss Paltrow's and it's fine. Travels. One of my best friends, he works at a millionaire, and that's where a lot of the the private jets, the charter jets, that's where they fly into that that part of the airport. It sounds to me like you were talking to a lot of people about Gwyneth Paltrow during this time. Is that correct? That's correct. You no, know, my best my best friend, he knew what happened, and he's the one who told me. So you didn't tell these people what happened, even though you were the one at the collision site? Yeah, I, I told my friend what happened, yes. Okay. So you were telling people about this we'll this We've got our close captioning are back. Yes, I've told people about it. And then they were telling you things they knew about Ms. Paltrow, that at least they claimed to know about Ms. Mm -hmm. Paltrow? Yes. But they could be mistaken, is that correct? Yes. All right, y'all, I'm going to switch feeds real quick so we can bring in closed captioning. So if Miss Paltrow's son didn't, in fact, second. break his arm. Um, I'm going to have to turn this back up. So if Miss Paltrow's son didn't, in fact, break his arm while skiing, you wouldn't dispute that. You wouldn't have any re way to dispute that, correct? I have no idea. That's just what I was told. Well, the son's going to testify. If you were to look at page, let's go to page seven. All right, there we go. Closed captioning. <clears throat> whoop, whoop. Those comments that I believe you've connected to Terry Sanderson, uh, those ones in the middle of the page, you, you can read them um, to yourself. But my question is, Given that See, this is the thing. When women have these conversations, it's called gossip. When men do it, it's just talking. Here, the sexism um, of it all. I, I wanted to ask you whether they you were found gossiping Terry to be articulate in his posts and comments on this page uh, following his injury. This is what I would be asking Ashes Grammy. So, did he know Gwyneth Paltrow was on the hill that day? Sustained as to vagueness. If you could point out something. Okay. So, um, go line by line, James. Go. go question by question. Go post by post. Brick the, by these brick. These are kind James. of difficult because they don't have dates on each comment, correct? They just show, for example. Brick by brick, James. One by one. This one at the bottom, you see on Very Terry's uh, or Very T's. Comment. It says 2,584 days ago. Correct. <laughs> Somebody do the math. Let's see okay. And James, that's from Saturday, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that. So I'm asking Mr. Ramon. Do Do you know when these comments were made? Is this on the day of the accident when he says you were? He's asking this witness. He's day? like, thanks, counsel. I would like the witness's knowledge. I don't see where it says you organized the. I don't see where it's. 
Where does it say that, that you organized a perfect day? Uh, oh, it's gosh. The, on page six, the, th- the third comment down. approach please oh what now today has already been spicy in a way that i did not anticipate this man does not want to answer these questions at all um it's interesting the you you arranged a perfect day it's just okay the witness that's currently on the stand has been recalled this was the first witness of the trial this is mr ramon who saw the crash or who testified that he saw the crash his cross-examination was exactly like this um slow on evasive page six says it's under very t yes kurt you organized the perfect day uh for skiing thank you the perfect That's true, Scott. I still have my wheels. It was nice to get to know you a bit Nothing's today. Do you know whether that was written on the day of the accident? I'm not sure if it was or not. Would it surprise you that uh, Mr. Sanderson was writing articulate notes like this after being knocked out and unconscious for two minutes? Uh, it doesn't send that articulate to me, but... It doesn't? Okay, that's all I have. Thanks. It doesn't sound that articulate to me. Mr. Bueller? Bueller. Do it, Judd. Do it. Say it again. Your Honor, say it again. Bueller. Just one more time. Your Honor, please give us something. We're just waiting for the plaintiff to testify. Just one more. Damn it. We've lost the moment. Just one more. Bueller. Come on. We'll do it ourselves. Bueller. Bueller. It's like four pages. What do you have to redirect him about, Bueller? Sir. What is he doing? Craig, can you look at uh, page six again? Okay, page six. Very T said, yes, Kurt, you organized a perfect day for skiing. Thank you. That's true, Scott. I still have my wheels. I was nice to get. Uh, Do you see that where it says, yes, Kurt, you organized a perfect day? Keep reading it. Yes, I do. I was nice to get to know you a bit today. And then um, look at the number of days it is. Is it 2,584? Yes, it is. Oh, my God. And then your comment below that. Thank you, chat. Chat is bae. 2,584 days ago was February 28th, 2016, a Sunday. Yes. This so would have been the day after. Days. Yes. Okay. Or okay. no, the yes. Any follow up, Mr. Egan? No, okay. please, you God, no. Down, Mr. Ramon. Yay. You still remain subject to the orders of the court until the case is over or you're released. So thank you. Thank you. Plaintiff testifies. Plaintiff right testifies. The plaintiff's going to testify. Plaintiff, right, you may call your next witness. Should have brought my sweater into my office this morning. Just call Mr. Terry Sanderson. Oh, you're the one doing the direct of Terry Sanderson. Wonderful. Well, buckle up, everybody. The plaintiff is taking the stand. This will be interesting if nothing else do you swear that de- that the testimony you are about to give in the case now before the court will be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you god thank you have a seat good morning sir all right yes for all of you that just popped in you have come here at the perfect time with almost 30,000 of you watching, it'd be sure nice if you would do the YouTube things. I am a YouTube creator, so you can like and subscribe. That would be great. I mean, I've been a lawyer for 17 years, but YouTube. YouTube. Sorry, I want you to get comfortable and speak into the mic, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Could you state and spell I your like name for the record, please? 
Yes. My name is uh, Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D, Sanderson, S-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. Thank you. Now, Terry, this is the fifth day of trial. We started last Tuesday. Um, Thank you. You haven't, you weren't here much last week, were you? Not at all. In the court, in the courtroom. Oh, they're going to explain you it. In the courthouse. Yes, definitely. Okay. Sure. Uh, and Mr. Owens has immediately asked to approach, and Mr. Sanderson already looks fucking annoyed. So this is going to be a delightful cross-examination if Sanderson is already annoyed. Um, I had turned court down a little bit because the last witness was loud, so I'll turn it back up. But Mr. Owens is like, can we approach? They're going to let him explain why he wasn't in court. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Let him explain. <sighs> this is going to be a morning. I hope we are sending a mug to the judge. I, I should send a bring the jury mug to uh to, to Judge Newman. Can we get the purple hair back? The purple hair is here. We're just a we're just a lighter shade of purple. We're a little we haven't had time to to update the purple. I've not had time to judge the purple. Um can we get some purple bring the jury t-shirts? The purple shirts are a bit harder, but we will take a look. Um multiple multiplayer lawyering. That's what it felt like this morning. And when everybody was just chiming in, generally when you have multiple co-counsels, the way that that will work for the court is that the counsel that's making the argument makes the argument to the court. If another lawyer has something they say, they say, may I have a moment here? They listen at counsel table to the other attorney, and then they make it on the record. You generally don't have three lawyers sitting at the table jumping in. It would be a disaster if you did. And we saw the court stick to that very strictly in depth. V heard. Does Owens have to do it all? He sure wants to have a witness said, no, I'm going to lie for being sworn in. I've never seen that maybe in their head. Oh, they will act absolutely. Terry, did you want to be here the be last addressing four Neil days Patrick Harris. last week? No, we didn't. Inside the courtroom. I love spending time with my daughters and have them hear what they had to say. But in this case, I didn't want to be here because I wanted them to speak totally freely and without the discomfort of being in my presence if they had something to say. Is that why you weren't here? Absolutely, yes. We're going to cut to the chase on a lot of things because I made counsel a promise that I would have you in less than an hour. Wow. And what? so we're, I'm going to be true to my word here. That's an odd um, way to say it. I will have you I will in have, less than an hour. We'll be done before 11. Okay. I want to talk about skiing. Tell the jury about your ski experience. What type of skier were you? At that time, or do you want some background? I, we don't need a whole lot of background. Okay. Back in 2016, are, what type of skier were you? Are I was they advanced intermediate? Have they not prepped their witness? No places I would go except um, serious bumps, um, narrow, narrow little gulches, and uh, uh, I didn't do any any big jumps. So, uh, other than that, I would go just about anywhere. Okay. How often would you ski? Two to three times per week. Okay. For how many years? Well, I started. 37 years ago, it was a winter sport for my family. We lived at high elevation. Okay. And in all of your years, other than the ski collision with Miss Paltrow, have you ever been in another ski accident? Never. Okay. Never. Have you ever skied with the ski patrol? As a matter of fact, I had the good fortune. I learned to ski from a family that owned a ski resort. They were, they were relation. And they would come out to Snowbird, and they were, I think, it was a whole family-run operation with eight children, and so they, they were ski patrollers, and they were instructors. And I had the very best of company every winter for a week when my kids were out of school. And then I had the good fortune of having a Lions Club friend, Scott, who's still a dear friend, that lives up in Spokane, and he was a ski patroller for Targi, and he said, Terry, come up with me. He you wore know, a helmet and, this day. And I said, I'll slow you down. And he said, you know what? Uh, just follow me and do what I do. And that's what I did. And I had the good fortune of spending a lot of time with Scott and seeing and observing what ski patrols do and how they 
calm people down and reassure them they're going to be okay. So I really appreciated that and okay. experience. So it sounds like you've skied at Snowbird, skied at Targhee. Had you ever skied at Deer Valley on the day of the collision? No, so, no. That was your first time ever skiing it at Deer was, Valley? It was, it was. Okay. So remember, the jury's going to be evaluating his pattern um, of speech couple of his, preliminary things. I, I his asked Ms. Paltrow cognition how tall she because was. so much has how been made about it. I think I'm so, now five five. Okay. The jury and is going what was your weight at the time of the, the collision? Well, the jury is going to be evaluating DA, all of that. You don't take anything off. You whatever you walk in with, your coats, heavy coats in wintertime, boots, um, Walls I give that excuse to oh. <laughs> what how, so, how, how much did you weigh about fully dressed I was or undressed probably 63 62 pounds 163 162 okay all right so we've the, the jury's heard about meetup groups so what is a meetup group a meetup group his speech is clear and he is quite articulate for me being new to this area he doesn't area. seem like he struggled um, with the questions but we'll see accumulate friends I have and, uh, I have so now retained my sweater with a, a new fellow said have you heard of meetup and I hadn't so he says look it up and sign up and I did and it was a wonderful organization of groups of people where you had a shared interest it's uh, whether it was a different story or, or, or a different skiing. and so I this is not what I expected based on his daughter's testimony really if that makes life changer sense. Does that make sense? So my understanding is why the, the weight question for whether he religion, knocked over Gwyneth Paltrow with kind of a group of That's people why. in the meetup group. Is that fair? Would Gwyneth Paltrow have felt That's this right. big right. body behind her if he's five foot five? And Did the group have a plan? Were you the organizer of that meetup group that day? No, I was so not. That'll I all be on his Kirk medical records. That over because I planned on being gone that day, and Kirk organized that. Okay. It sounds like obviously you weren't gone that day. You ended up being able to make it. I came back a little early from wherever I was and, and just said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go ski today. And um, I happened to see on the list that day also was a lady that I had met when I first moved here. And she happened to be a ski instructor at Canyons. And but she had been so at he was as well. 69 so when this I happened go. in 2016. I'll, I'll pick you up. So I picked her up at Kimball Junction on the way and went there with her and dropped her off at the skis. And I just wonder what the jury will the think. Group, and I asked Kirk if it would be okay if she let our group out because she's very familiar with Deer Valley. And so um, she said yes and gave us the rules of the road. Would you like to hear that? So the meetup group, you guys kind of ski all together. Ish. Well, and this skiing meetup group is unusual. It's like herding cats. You've got those of just want to go and, and, and they kind of know who one another is and so they they go ahead and, and group up and, and sometimes I wind up skiing with the uh, beginners and getting them started and making them comfortable and uh, so they don't stay together well. We meet usually we'll say let's meet at Alps at 1.30 and so that's what we do. Okay so you mentioned we set forth the rules of the road for that day. What were the rules of the road that day? Well the only rules of the road we are Ski pretty safe. familiar with the rules of the road so we don't go over that at the time, but Debbie just said, we're going to start down, Band down Bandana because that's how we'll get to the Blacks are really good skiing. So our group knew that's where we're headed. And she said, whatever you do on Bandana, do not go down the middle of the run. Why it's not? It's a lot of kids. and crowded with people. She said, go down the edges. She said, it'll be clear. And so when I came over the edge of the hill, there were heads bobbing in the middle. It was just compacted. A sea with little of heads children. And tall heads and and I just diagonaled. I went straight over to the right edge of that run. And is that where you stayed uh, prior to the collision? I did. I stayed there the whole time because and it was wide open. So you were over to the right side to avoid the people. Did it have anything to do with your vision? There's been a lot of discussion about your, your right eye problem. Yes. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But skiing on the right side of the the, uh, the run, did that have anything to do with your right eye? Yeah, maybe that's one of the things, yes. Okay. We'll talk about your vision in just a couple minutes, but sure. I want to focus on the collision right now. Craig Ramon, he just testified. Oh, yes. You saw did. him. He, he also testified last week. How well did you know Craig at the time um, back February, February 2016? 
Um, he was one of maybe an average of 15 people, 10 or 15 people that would come, so I shared his company uh, during those times. And um, I knew him only as being an amazing skier, strong, strong skier, and, and knew that. And I appreciated the fact he tended to like to follow the group and uh, be behind as the protector because he brought a lady that was a person I knew that was his neighbor. So he would bring her up and ski behind her as a protector. So good guy, good guy. Did you guys hang out a lot before this you know, collision? Um, of course, at lunch, we spent time together. And there may be an, a couple of other occasions where we met with him, but usually there was somebody else there um, along with us. Okay. So not exclu I don't remember being exclusive with him. All right. So, Terry, take the jury through what happened in this ski collision. Take it from, say, getting off of the lift. Yes, happy to do that. Um, it was really a very nice day for skiing, and I was really looking forward to it. And, of course, Tirelli has amazing groomed runs. Found that out right away. And um, so um, I'm starting from the when I get off. When, when you got off of the ski lift. Gotcha. So I was on a chair with um, probably four people, I think uh, Joanne, Debbie, um, Craig, and there could have been another person besides myself. And we had already met and discussed going down the right side of that run, or going down the sides. And so I came over the top of the hill and saw that and headed for the right side, and I'll pick it up there. And everyone His just memory kind of seems very so clear of what happened. More to the right and more to the left. And, and Chad, I'm fine with discussing Noah. his testimony there, um, as long as we're not disparaging runs, anybody. His testimony seems very of clear. Of the off it seems very so smooth. They stay away from that area where the pile of snow is piled up. Seems and, very uh, off-piste can be a rough ride. If linear. You have to divert and run out in there. And of course, we're going to discuss this because, there easy because he's alleging he has so a lot of difficulty I start, with cognition. I went right down the run and started just making nice soft turns and um, staying within that boundary. It could have been as much as five yards wide, but it might have been more like five or six feet. But I find him very linear. I can't, I can't imagine, I can't remember. Lots of room. And so I'm just skiing easy and paying attention, and um, all of a sudden in front of me is two big signs. I've never seen that big of slow down signs. I like that he's. It seemed like they were four by eight, like a four by eight sheet of plywood size. Acting high, it out. With great big letters, slow down. I went, well. He's like, me? And I'm looking around, and the crowd's about the same as me, and speed wise. And so so did I just, you pay attention to the sign? I did. And then I backed off of whatever I was doing, and then another big sign, like 10 feet away, the same eight by four by eight sh sheet up there, big letters. Well, they're serious. Must be lots of merging trails down here. What? So um, I did he say triples? Backed off. What did again. he say? I missed that. The skiers were on my left. We we're all about the same speed, and um, um, I could see down where Troy the story. edge of the Thank runway. you for the unofficial time. It curved around. A tree line came out a little bit, and it little run came. Well, turned, this man reads but oh, merging trails. Thank you. This man reads the, books while he's driving. Some montage or Empire could about half of that beautiful building, and and um, I, and was wide open. There was nothing. We're on to coffee. In Cheers. Front of me. And so um, I came around that corner, and it was it takes my breath away to think. I, this is hard because I I don't like going through this scene. I I just remember. Everything was great, and then I heard something I've never heard at a ski resort, and that was a blood-curdling scream. Just, I can't do it. It was, uh, Oh, then, we're acting it out. Boom. And it was like somebody was out of control and going to hit a tree and was going to die. And that's what I had until I was hit. That's what was going on in your mind. Overruled. That's what's going on in, in your mind when you hear that scream. That was instantaneous. Oh my gosh, somebody's out of control. And they're really seriously out of control. 
not time for a hawkish talk. I didn't go think about that, but How? most people could avoid that, I think. Good okay. Excuse. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. And I'll move on. No, but so you counsel, you don't have to move on. It's not speculation. It's what he Overall. thought. And just like Gwen so has said, she didn't story. know if somebody was assaulting yes. her. That's what she what thought. This is what he thought. You this know, was his impression. I got hit in my back so hard. And it, I, I'm right at my shoulder blades. And it felt like, and was perfectly centered. And the, the fists and the poles were right there. And the fists and the poles were right there. A serious smack. Never been hit that hard. And I'm flying. I'm absolutely flying. He just repeated himself airborne. a little. Well, it all I saw was a whole lot of snow, and I didn't see the sky. But I was flying in that sense. I had no control. And I remember this thinking, okay, you really got to hang on. And then I thought about the crowd on the left, and I thought, I don't know who's wanted over there, and I do not want to get them mixed up in here. And I've heard, you know, um, that maybe that's not decided about how my ribs really got hurt. I absolutely lurched with what little I could off of my skis a little bit more to the right to keep, to make sure nobody over here got involved on my left side. And then- So you got like hit, but you didn't up. have control, but you did have control. Nobody in front of me, just me going to the ground and you're falling far further than- He couldn't have fallen like, fall like this. On the floor. You, you, you got that extra. All of and his so experts said he had to, to fall on one of his arms and to break his ribs. He did, I just could said, not okay, you got to protect your face this you know, way. and your head. And that's the last thing I remember. It didn't happen. I did glance over and saw just, just out of the corner of my eye. I could see, not glance over, but I could see somebody going by. And I'm going, okay, they're, they're safe. Last thing I remember, everything's black. Did black. the person who struck you land on top of you? I wouldn't know that. I he said, last thing I remember, not know that. I was just surprised everything went I had black. no upper body strength enough to be able to catch myself. I had no idea. Did she? Do you remember hitting your head on the ground? No, that part, no, nope, that's all gone. I just Because his ribs, he had to hit on the side. The he did not. What's the next thing you remember? He's also had a brain injury, he says. So he had to hit from the side somehow. Not getting an this adrenaline way. rush here, I guess. Living this again, just being here in present too. Uh, and let me just what? stop you really quick. You said you're getting an adrenaline rush. Is this something that you enjoy? Adrenaline rush? Not this no. kind. <laughs> Not now. Okay. okay. She All meant right. testifying. So what's the first thing that you remember? She meant to enjoy the next thing being the center of attention after well, you're yes. on the ground. Um, the first remember is everything is still black. Thanks, Cheryl. I'm unconscious. It seemed odd. And I thought it might be a video glitch. But it's like my subconscious is going into protection mode. Like, okay, that is. Pay attention here and listen to what's being said to you. And all I could recognize was that, that someone was really angry at me. And it was a man. And it didn't come out clear in the beginning. I couldn't really hear what he was saying, but I just knew he was mad. And he was right, right above me, right close to me. And I'm feeling a little afraid, and I tried to move, and I could not move a limb. I couldn't move my head. I couldn't move my body. Nothing was responding. Just this message I was getting. And the next thing, it became, became a little more clear, and I heard him say, do you realize, you realize that you weren't skiing under the rules. You hit somebody. You hurt somebody. And it just insistent that I was the bad guy. And that's why I said, this has got to be a husband or boyfriend. It's really mad at me. And I sound did, like a big... Did you know who he was? I had no idea. No idea. Okay. It was just a very angry person trying to um, bully me into believing something that I oh. didn't think could happen was I heard a woman's voice, right? Again, couldn't move. And about the third time he went through that and it's getting louder and it's, I started to understand what he was saying and he was really insistent that I was doing something wrong and hit somebody. 
And I remember in desperation because I couldn't move anything. I tried to, I couldn't fight. I couldn't fly. Who's, who's going to try? And I tried moving something and I could move my skis a little bit. Stream here, I could just update feel my just layouts. My knee, I could just slide my skis I a little bit. I promise I won't and, do it all day. And, and that's an important point. My skis are still on. They're still on. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking I gotta placate this guy. He's really mad. If he decided he wanted There's to There's a lot of thinking on me, going on. Right now, I could finish me He's off. like, I how do so, I defuse the situation? And his friend's like, he doesn't saying, know his name. That's different. Okay, now you're, you're whispering. Whisper, I know I am, because maybe, that's I'm what sorry. I heard. Nothing was coming I'm out. My sorry. lips were moving, my tongue was moving. There was nothing coming out of my mouth, and my heart rate went up again. Okay. okay? It looked like what you were mouthing was, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. And, and I was just going, I can't believe it. I thought, try again. I'm sorry. Nothing was coming out. And to me, Come I heard back. nothing. When you kind of mumbled, whispered, whatever you want to call it, I'm sorry, was that you apologizing for causing the accident? No, absolutely not. I was trying to placate this man in the only defensive manner that it's I could. It's a very linear testimony. You talked about the man who was, who was young. Very linear you. testimony. How does he know a Ms. woman Petra hit last him? Week I guess he talked assumed about, from the scream. Ad admitted that she was kind of cussing you out. The as friend well. said he was Do face down in the snow. Do you remember any conversation that you had or this anything that she said This is very different than the friend's testimony. Absolutely not. There was one voice that my brain was focused on. Thank God, I guess. Uh, and, and that was self-protection, I guess. I only heard a male voice, a mad, angry male voice. I heard nothing. Maybe that happened before I came to that point in consciousness. Were you still on the ground at this time? Still on the ground, absolutely, face down okay. on how the did, ground. How did you end up getting up? How did you hit well, your ribs on the side? Too, but, um, basically, um, I heard Craig saying, Terry, are you okay? Now, this is Craig Ramon? Well, at that point, I didn't identify his voice. I, you know, I just things were a little strange yet. And, uh, and I heard, Terry, are you okay? This whole and, um, trial is going to come down to who the jury me, believes, if anyone, is here, to or they're going to chalk it up to a ski accident an and find it 50-50 and nobody's and I, going to I win. said, oh my gosh. And I went through and I, I looked up and I could see Craig standing there above me, eight or ten feet, and on his immediate left, my right, Laura, I think all he said he outfit. couldn't hear how loudly he said, I'm sorry, but it was misinterpreted. And, you know, he wasn't good. apologizing and, for the um, accident. And he was I thought, placating. Oh, he's here to help me, right? He looks like he's from Deer Valley. And so... This um, is what Craig said almost exactly. I, I was going through the things, answering his question about, that was my thoughts, now back to my, what my injuries are. Craig is saying, are you okay? And I said, oh, my... My ribs are so sore. There's just this really deep, throbbing purple pain here. And, and then I said, um, my vision is swimming with sparks. And they were unusual sparks. I'm going, is that my retina? Is that my eyes? And it wasn't a retinal detachment, a retinal hole or anything. And I'm going, that's my brain. I'm thinking, those sparks are my brain. And all this time, you're still on the ground? I'm still. Um, actually, yeah, the next point is that after I tell me about my ears going, I'm going, my ears are buzzing. Oh, and I said my brain is like it's on Novocaine. And, and then I realized, oh, I'm not seeing. Oh, I, you know what, I missed a spot. And that's where I looked up and couldn't see them and got frightened about that. And that was me. And I, I, I was oh, just trying oh, to move the closed on? captioning. And then Sorry. I went like this. And go, oh. We're professionals here. Happy, I could see. So I missed that part. That happened before I started telling what all is wrong with me, answering his question. And then Craig said to me, as I remember, of course I'm, my brains are a little bit stretched out of place. And Your and brains are I, stretched out of I, place. I, re I remember um, him saying, do you know who you are? And what I thought I said was, oh my gosh, I can feel this pathway in my brain that's going around and trying to figure out who I am. And yes, I know I'm Terry. And 
Then he said, um, do you know where you are? And There's I a said, lot of exposition I know I'm in speed, here. But I don't know where I am. And that's when the man in green took off. He, he was, was wearing a helmet. Noticing that he really wasn't interested in what I had to say. He wasn't asking questions. He was standing there rather stoically, head not moving, goggles on, just resting on his poles and his skis and was sort of disinterested. But when he skied off, my heart sank because I really thought he was the one person that was there to help me. And, and I, I'm laying on the ground with my head downhill and I couldn't see where he went. So I was really... So he's still Jared, laying on the ground out? at this point. The question is how I got up and that might have been the question in the beginning. But That's right. How did you get up? You know, I realized that I was getting cold and um, snow was packed in around me. I was starting to get a little shivery, uh, uh, maybe from a little shockish maybe. And, and I started, I gotta go, I gotta get my skis downhill. And I started sliding my skis around and my legs around. I think Craig must have been shell-shocked about this guy leaving too. I don't know but what he thought, but I remember getting my skis around and it's so painful every time you have to contract your- Terry. Thank you. How did you get up? Thank you. That is one of my habits. I just focus. After I got halfway around, a man showed up in front of me, and I thought he came from the right. And I don't remember if he said one word to me. He just reached down and grabbed me and jerked me up on my feet, which I was not ready to be up on my feet. My head's swimming. I'm in pain, I'm worried about falling down again. That must have been tremendously rib, painful with along. his rib. He gets me up and I'm on the edge of the run, so it's I mean, bumpy. It's, it's uncontroverted, he broke ribs, that hurts like, skis under like me all and hell. Stomping down the snow. That must have been tremendously spot, painful. Got my, got my poles wedged in and I think I've got it in stability and he's gone. And this time, I could see him. I could watch him go all the way down. Who, the him who, who's him? And I'm up. I'm standing up. But am I feeling safe? No. People are going by, shh, 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 you know. And I'm thinking, Man, I do not want to get hit again. My understanding is that you and Craig tried to ski down a little ways, but then didn't quite make it too far. Is that accurate? Yeah. He said, you think you can ski? And I'm thinking, if this, I, the option is getting left up here, I will try anything. This plaintiff is not here. colorblind. That so, is yes, Craig uh, the witness. So, yes, he should follow me. And I did. And I don't helps. know how I was skiing. I don't think I was edging. I think I was probably snow plowing. And he finally turned around and said, Terry, Terry, stop. You've forgotten how to ski. He said, and, what now? And of course, it was just, we were trapped. And he said, I got to find help. That's not what he said at all. Here's the here. This is not what he said. This is not what Craig Eventually, testified to. Craig got help, yes. Craig yeah, said, said he was in pain, and, so and that's why he got and help. I just put my head down and Craig said prayed that I he was in pain, and again. he was like, "Can you Felt ski?" And he's like, "No." And then he and he disappeared. Called ski patrol. What happened when help arrived? You know, um, Whitney um, showed up, and I was so grateful to see someone. And now is that I, Whitney Smith? Yes, I, that's her name. Mm -hmm. And the jury has seen pictures, and we're going to put another picture up in just a couple minutes. Is she the one in a, in a red jacket that there's a picture of in this case? Do you know? Yes, as a matter of yes, that's her. Mm -hmm. All right. So did she take you down on the, tr the toboggan, or how did you get down? She did. Um, um, she said, um, are, you, are you okay kind of thing, and I don't know. not so good. I don't remember the conversation. It was a little easy stuff, and so... Um, got in and I remember Whitney saying to me, now you got to remember these things because I'm going to ask you again later. And she told me that I would she was be terrible at that, no years matter before, what, I'd be terrible at that. Uh, and it started on the ski patrol here five years before. She loved her job. Her name was Whitney and that she had a horse named Titan that she wore in the years off. So she told me to remember those things I'm going. And you this, still remember them? Brain test. She's wanting to check if my brain's okay. And from that point on, 
I quit worrying about myself. I quit worrying about my injuries. It was just like, I'm going to remember this. I do not want to have any brain injuries. And I locked onto that and, and nothing else. And later on, she did ask me and I could repeat it back to her exactly. As you she just repeated me. it back seven and, years later. Uh, oh, she won the women's downhill in the ski patrol of women's competition. Sounds like you still remember some of I, these details. Just, I was so determined to hang on to that fact, those facts, yes. Sharon, I'm going to answer uh, this question at the once break. Once you got down, they were, they're no longer in the case. What type of medical attention did you I'll talk receive? about that more. Still at the ski resort. Yeah, well, Whitney is not a paramedic. She's not an EMT. Um, I, I didn't really expect her to Don't have Don't explain other people's actions. About neurological testing and pupil testing. Y'all, if you are testing. a witness, she did explain what you saw, what you know, and what you did. Exactly what she's supposed do not to do explain other people's actions because you don't know why other people do what they do. Okay, so Just watch Vanderpump Rules and you'll understand. You, you never get? understand what, what other, somebody else is thinking. Did you get oh, no when medical. you got down to the bottom? No medical treatment. Okay. Am I missing something? Did, did you get checked out at the Instacare? Or Am I missing something? No, she's just asking you questions. Yes, um, I asked Debbie, I said, where can I go and get checked and see what they say? And she said, well, let's stop at the Instacare. I know it's on the way. So I'd never been there before, but that's Betty, where Betty, don't, stopped. that's a very good catch. I heard him say it's too late for a hockey stop. So you got checked out. When did, when did you learn that it was Gwyneth Paltrow that you were Oh, I want to know this too. I want to know this. It was brought up, I think, that the, the the people that came in uh, to the room to check on me that were part of my group would they check in and check out once and and um, which is what I tell them go ski and go enjoy yourself and um, and so um, it, it came up and it probably was Craig who said I heard him say it was Gwen and Paljo and to me it's like I'm not into celebrity worship so um, I didn't care huh. at that point. Did you think it was cool? It's an interesting to statement. collide with a celebrity. Absolutely not. That is not who I am. No. Do you ever write that? Ever tell anybody that? I don't think Apparently it came out. Apparently, he those words, but said I said it in his depot. That, I. I think I was trying to communicate to my kids, and the reason was because I got calls from friends that knew my kids that heard I got crushed on at the ski resort, and so I. Rushed. I, I thought I gotta, I gotta let my kids know I'm okay. That was my main point. I don't want them to worry about me. I'm okay. And so celebrity I just, worship I is an interesting. And May said, "Way to I'm say famous it. or something." Okay. And we're gonna pull that up. Could you pull up Thank you. Exhibit 111, please? Though I did take the "I'm famous." I'm yes, interested to see this. I took the "I'm famous" as sarcastic. I really did. I took it as a it the "I'm famous" email. <laughs> I took it as sarcasm, especially seeing some of his Facebook posts saying, um, you know, our family coat of arms ties in the back. I just took it as kind of gallows humor, but we'll see what happens. Um, for those of you asking about a hockey stop, it's a two ski stop versus a like pizza pie wedge stop. So it's a quick stop to the side like hockey players do. Um, I've skied Deer Valley, but I was very, very young when I skied Deer Valley and don't remember it tremendously well. We used to go skiing a lot um, as kids. My mom loves to ski, still skis. Sometimes old technology like the Elmo works better than the new technology, doesn't it? Is that a dig at James? Like, is there a question pending? Or are we just trying to have a sassy moment? Why don't we talk about your shoes and ask him about being 5'5"? Five five? Like, like, just... What is happening? Oh, they're putting the are they putting an iPad on the Elmo? Plug it in. Oh, we're gonna plug it in. This is delightful. All right, I'm gonna answer some questions while we are here. It was it was totally snarky. Oh, I don't I don't understand the point of all of that snark. I don't know if it if it helps, and I don't find it endearing. Sometimes All I right. love a good snark. And Terry, you could come down. If For you my need purposes, to I love it. Does it show on your screen there? I don't think the jury's um, going to like yeah, it. Yeah, but I'm not the the eye doctor. I'm not wearing fashion because I broke the pair of glasses I bought and couldn't find the old pair. So now I'm. Okay. He can't read them. All right. Yes, so I want to go through this. I think those um, are very fashionable. Defense exhibit glasses. 111. 
They're going to start see? calling. We're going to start calling him First Colonel all, Sanderson in a minute. There are two posts. The first looks like on the bottom is the first at uh, see Ben Chu kept his snark PM, for outside the presence of the, the jury. The response was at 9:32 p.m. Do you see that? Aaron, the closed all captioning's right. at the top. The message reads, and I'm just just tell me if I read it right. From you to Jenny, Bingo. Polly, and Shay. Those are your three daughters. Mm -hmm. yes, Did I read that okay. correctly? And the subject said, I'm famous. Do you see that? I do. Why did you write, I'm famous? She should have asked him, you do know, you remember why you again, wrote my that? my head was scrambled. All I was trying to do is desperately communicate with my kids before they heard from somebody else I got crushed. So, um, crushed, I he's now saying crushed. As well. Um, not at all how I felt, and I really was trying to add a little levity to a serious situation, and it, it backfired. Little did I know that. I don't know if the jury's going to believe you were crushed um, by Gwyneth Paltrow. So you write. I'm Your attorney famous, called her small but mighty. And here's what happened from my friend and eyewitness, and then there's the link. The link. The link. We now know what the link shows. Okay. Sorry, I thought you were going to the GoPro. I'll withdraw my comment. You withdraw your objection? The, link. the yes. fucking okay. link, Owens! So, we now know what the link is. Yes. Correct? The link is... Uh, is the link. Bum, bum, bum. It's a really bad picture. Pamela, I appreciate that. I think crushed is an accidental picture. word, it's substitution picture, for crashed. Uh, Whitney Smith. And see, I oh, thought it was him embellishing, so I appreciate the the it's difference that. in perspective on that. Thank you. And then that leads to That's why I love the chat later so much. Y'all smart. Back and forth between you and Craig. Yes. This is his lawyer. This is his lawyer asking him questions. In that, under that picture, can you read what it says? Um, yes. Um, Whitney kept me entertained while probing you. You want to speak in the mic? Oh, yes. Um, Whitney kept me entertained while probing me with questions to evaluate my senses. A dedicated outdoor person and horse lover from Michigan. She also took me down in the toboggan by herself and won the DV Women's Downhill oh. Race Contest. A sweetheart. I was grateful for her. That made him Are very those emotional. the thing? First of all, did you write that under her picture? You know, I don't know what time it was added. Carlene. Did was you hurrying write it? back from St. George. And but did you write it? I don't know. Um, she helped me a lot um, verbalize things because things weren't making sense at all in all right. communication. And she may have helped and participated in that. I don't know. Those details, are those the details that Whitney wanted you to memorize as you were taking down the toboggan? Yep. Okay. All right. Can you go back up to the emails? All right, so you send that out to your three daughters. I yes? did, yes. Okay. And Shay, who testified last week, she responded to you with the top post, correct? Yes. All right. Can you read what it says? I can. Actually, let's put the subject. Wait, was there a what question? The subject says. Aren't we? Ugh. It says I'm famous at what cost, question mark. Do you know why Shay wrote <laughs> that? Well, that it, Beth, he would have uh, he I, would have told this I story a lot of times. She may have called me. Did um, she? Um, so if it sounds right rehearsed, this, he would have and, told uh, this story a lot. And so speculation. Right. Right. Vicky, Sustained. thank you. I've got a lot of Do options to play with because there's an update. Um, and I appreciate it. I'm pretty certain that she checked in on me and made a phone call. I'm just getting and, comfy um, since we live here now. What, what did, do you remember what you told her? I redecorated since we were in South Carolina. Yeah, I had a chance to talk about my symptoms exactly, I think. And, and that I, I said. I also fixed my camera. I said, you know, as many people that were on that slope that day, maybe a couple hundred within that vicinity, there has to be a, a GoPro um, picture or video if it's a helmet mount they're going to look over just like Craig did, right? And they're going to go catch it. They hear a holler, they're going to catch it. I'm going, I just know there's one out there. We've got to find that. That is the evidence we need. 
And um, evidence. So that is the evidence we need. Terry? She misinterpreted. Did you have a GoPro? Absolutely. I do have one, yes, but I did not have it on that day. Do you know of anybody in your ski group that had a GoPro? No. Have you ever seen a GoPro video of this accident? Absolutely not. No. I would have loved to have it. It was what we needed. It was what we needed. Okay. We can take that off. Hmm. I saw a couple questions. Did he watch his Let's daughter's testimony? He's your allowed injuries. to. If he was what out of the room, he would be allowed to, your to watch. What understanding did you sustain um, in this collision? But I don't know if he did. But he would be allowed point. to. That would be that right would now. be proper. Right now. What, what your understanding as to what, what happened, happened to Terry Ma'am. in this collision? Ma'am. At this point, I know that I had at least at least four broken ribs. Um, I sustained at a concussion. Least? Do you um, think there were more? And um, Does he think he broke more ribs? That's the two main factors, I think. And then later on, I had some right leg and still do, right leg and anomalies movement. It just has its own idea and thinking where it needs to be, opposed to what I'm thinking. Okay. Which Let's would be talk frustrating. about how your ribs, that has happened with how my your back brain injury, before my how spinal that has affected fusion. You. Have things in your life changed? I'm like living another life now. Okay. This I'm Let, very I, interested Let's focus to hear. on, we'll kind of go step by step, different, different things. Physical wise, how, how have you changed physically since the accident? Well, I can't ski anymore. I was told that if I did and had another crash, that I could wind up full time Full time in a nursing home, the odds of that's very high. So and, no more skiing. Well, and I, I tried, I tried not to go back, and, and and I did ski a few more times by myself just to see if I still could. I had this ungodly-looking fluorescent red outfit I bought, a MIPS helmet to protect my brain better, and I thought I can do this. I really. This I don't is know what kind of helmet that joy. is. I, meet friends, I make friends, I stay with them the whole year. They're, it's a year-round activity, and it's a life, lifelong activity. It's a lifestyle as well. And so I, I tried, and I felt like I was skiing through landmines, just ridiculous. Looked ridiculous, all bright fluorescent red, wasn't thinking very well. And then, and then I'd, I'd have to stop every 30 yards and look back behind me to make sure no one was right behind me. Saw a reaction. And, um, um, gradually gave it out just three, four times, and I think I was done. Okay. Before we go into more activities, what about physically? Do you have pains, aches, pains, problems? Your physical being, how are you? Um, I'm, I'm a much more careful person. Um, I don't take any risks and more She's brain She's going to have to ask it again. I'm not sure I understand your question sure. exactly. Have you had any kinds of balance issues or headaches? Um, of course, initially, that was just, I, I, my life was living in an orange chair, sitting there initially, and sleep for 12 hours and then sit for half an hour and tell Carlene, I gotta, I gotta go back to bed. But to be fair, it's not like that anymore. No, it's not, no. I. She's trying to ask have, you what it's like no, now. No, more. No, it's not. So now, let's talk about. She needs to ask him mentally. again. No, how, she should have asked him again. How have you seen yourself change mentally? What are some things that you've noticed or difficulties that you've? The had hard thing mentally? is he doesn't seem to want to admit Many things some of the I things he's the complaining of through his doctors. Or the intelligence or training to explain. You have lots of words. I do. I admit. <laughs> It's just, this has been a bizarre part of this process, is that I never feel like I've explained enough. There's, I, it's so like big Most gaps. everyone I, I know like that's neurodivergent feels. And everyone may recognize that by going through and building a case, and they don't know what I'm talking about until I get to the subject. So it's, everything is backwards. I'm building from the little things and, and then saying, oh, I'm talking about apples. They're going, I had no idea. 
upside down and backwards. Communication just feels like I, I can't connect. And, um, and so I keep trying, desperately trying. And, and um, yeah, personality changes is not something I, I just know it's different. Things are weird. You ever get lost? Oh my gosh, that was among the first signs when I tried to get out and work on the green team. And um, the, I, wait, whoa, whoa, what's the green team? What, the, what are well, you talking I, about? I volunteer for lots of groups, um, probably a couple hundred years, hours a year at least, I would think. And green team is one of those a significant, a large group of heavy, heavy lifters who pick up um, plastic and aluminum and recycle after concerts and USANA was the main one even though we've done Liberty Park and it's a group of maybe 15 people and we stay up until one o'clock in the morning picking that up up there and recycled the last year I worked 2015 23 tons and it's not just walking 16,000 steps on what I saw and it's bending and stooping and lifting. It's my and understanding up and dragging a bag that there was a records work, assessment done by the defense really, really but we'll get into their case later and doing that so that's what that is. So I tried going up there, and, I, and usually I carpool, and that day I didn't, usually the driver. And so I parked and went and did our thing, and it's maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock, and went back to the car and headed home. I'm going the wrong direction. I'm going, what's going on? I've done this dozens of times. I was I mean, lost. And just to clarify, also, I mean, this is since the, the ski crash, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Is and this my different, instincts though? are always knowing where north is. It's really been good having grown up in the mountains. It just was instinctual. At night, I don't know what that's I like. had no instincts anymore, anyway. And so I headed just instinctually. What's that like to know which direction things are? North or south or somewhere else, and that happened a second time. Oh, Laura, I don't think we're going to make it. Has that ever happened to you before this ski collision? I've never been so reliable, relying, needing uh, maps. And so um, I, I'm pretty sure I've lost visual memory because it doesn't, knowing what those is turns visual and the memory? You turn, the streets should turn at, that feels like, and I know a little bit about that, that feels like a deficit I have, that, that doesn't, I don't retain that anymore. I can be there a dozen times and I still have to use maps to make sure I get there. Really odd. What about emotional, Terry? How are your relationships with your family and friends since the ski accident? And the reason I say what is visual you know, memory is because um, I don't have any visual memory. I didn't realize that was a part of my ADHD until I realized other and, people could um, do that, and I, I can't. I think I. I didn't of realize course, that was something people could do. To be close to my family and my girls, but. My something's wrong things in, 3D. in my essence and what I what I bring to the table with them and communication is not as smooth and and um, um, it's it's been more difficult no question and they've they've told me they've noticed some changes yeah now I didn't know you before Jerry didn't know you before what kind of relationships did you have with your girls before this crash my goals are always angels. I'm their protector. <sighs> Some things happened to them I'm testifying that I heard about it. It hurts to see them in that place as their protector. I rode home with them and sort of sobbing. So I get caught up in that. Do you love your girls? Oh my gosh. There's Fourth. been some discussion about um, your relationship with Jenny and that it's not always optimal. From your perspective, what is your relationship like with Jenny? And how has it been even before this accident? Yeah, Jenny, Jenny and I probably don't communicate as well as I do with my other two daughters. Not probably, definitely we don't. Just have a hard time um, in that process, and I will not give up. I try to push to keep that those lines open, but there's been times when there's been long breaches in our conversation, and um, yeah, I I feel like her protector more than anybody does. So it's hard, been harder for me to 
transition from being a parent to being an adult, an equal adult. I just feel like I need to intervene more. I think a lot of parents struggle with that. Me. This has been hard. Let's talk about Carlene. How do you not struggle with that? We heard her that? testify last week. Um, she's a catch. Why'd you let her go? Wow. Well, okay, that's just it's her my style. My choice. I would not, but I had it. After eight months, I had to tell her to leave. I said, "I'm not asking that. I'm telling you, you got to leave." And, huh? I. Why'd you tell her to leave? I knew she didn't buy into this. She didn't buy in to me not being the same person and coming coming into a relationship and. And I said, I'm not sure I'm going to get to back to normal again. And I don't want you to feel like you're, that I'm a crippled vet and you're going to stick it out with me because I know you would. Half a brain or whatever. I know you would, but don't do it. You need your life. You run right now. And it was a sad time for both of us, I know. And she's in a great relationship with Bill now. And that was the purpose. And I think better than what I would have brought, honestly. It's hard to admit that, but it's true. Council, this would be a good place to take a break. Sure. Okay, we'll take a short recess. Okay, and with that, um, I don't know. I don't read she didn't buy Why into you this. Stand now, and then you're welcome to step down during the break. I don't read she didn't buy into this as a she's not buying what he's selling. I I interpreted him saying or trying to say um, she didn't sign counsel, up. Counsel, would you approach for the this. bench, please? I want to hear what he has to say to counsel, but I I read it as she didn't sign up for this. Like she she signed up for an active um, an active and vibrant relationship. I appreciate that you guys interpret it differently because the jury might as well. And that's why we are so active in the chat talking about this. Um, here's the difficult thing. Is the jury going to believe him or not? And are they going to believe that this is a normal part of aging or not? And that's a very real conversation that the jury's going to have to have. Was the accident Gwyneth Paltrow's fault? And did it cause all of this? We'll see. We'll see. Um, I want to see if we get to what the lawyers are saying. I'm going to answer some questions while we're on break. Excuse me. So I'm going to answer some questions while we're on break um, and see if we can hear this. Kelsey said, can't wait to hear from Jenny. So I cover this in quick bits today, but I'm going to cover it again here. I don't know if we're going to hear from Jenny. I know. I don't know if we're going to hear from Jenny. The subpoena, it seems, was not a proper subpoena. She lives out of state in Idaho, not in Utah. They cannot compel her to come to court. And it seems that at least last week, Gwyneth Paltrow's attorneys did not expect that Jenny would come to court. So I don't know if we will see Jenny testify. Does the jury have to be unanimous, evil ex-cookie too? Cookies are never evil. They're always amazing. Love cookies. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Does the jury have to be unanimous? No. This is a civil case. They need three-fourths of the jury to decide. How much is he suing for? Jim, this has been widely misreported, but in opening statements, the defense attorneys asked to value the damages at $3.26 million. What's interesting is we haven't heard how they get to that value yet at all. Um, Lindsay, thank you for filling this in. What kind of helmet? The multi-directional impact protection system helmet. There we go. Um, Sherry Smith said, I just found this. I had to join. Is he suing Miss Paltrow? Emily, you are so funny. Love it. I definitely have a bit of sass. That is why this is the top place to watch live trials together because our chat is bay and we try to keep it real. Um, yes. Terry Sanderson, Colonel Sanderson at this point, Colonel Sanderson, which is probably an improper joke because he was in the military. So it's probably not his actual rank. He probably does have a military rank. Um, he is a vet and he um, was and did obtain services at the VA. So it's probably not his actual rank. Mr. Sanderson, there, we'll go with the Matrix reference instead of the food reference. He is suing Ms. Paltrow. She is counter suing him. They are both suing for simple negligence. Simple negligence means there was a duty. 
There was a breach of that duty, that breach called damage. Damage doesn't have to be physical injury. It can be monetary damage, but they caused damage. Wait, 16,000 steps bending and hauling post-crash. That's what it sounds like that he was able to do um, heavy lifting after the accident with his green team. Um, my ADHD makes me over-communicate, poor fella. Mine does too. I over-explain. It is something my poor husband is just like, you don't have to explain yourself again. I'm like, I do though. I feel like you haven't heard me. <laughs> I feel like I've, I feel like I've not explained myself well. Um, there's occasionally I'll see people saying, Hey, um, you, you, you are repeating yourself. And I'm like, Hey, I'm very neurodivergent. I do that. Um, Jesse said EDB got a shout out, um, this morning on my local radio host live stream. Lots of love to this channel. We, I have been um, blessed to find people in all different kinds of media that I enjoy working with. So I've done um, quite a lot of interviews for this case. How is any of this not age-related cognitive decline? The difference between 69 and 75 is huge. We're going to see Gwyneth Paltrow's team arguing that, and we've seen the experts from the plaintiff's team arguing that it is because of this injury, because there is a marked difference from before the crash and after the crash. It's how much I think the jury believes that um, his daughter's recitation of him before and after is accurate or whether they kind of had rose colored glasses. And then after the accident, maybe it seemed like things changed. It just depends on how they interpret. I think the daughter's testimony and I find the daughter's testimony to be helpful, but I said it this morning. Um, I was on CBS streaming this morning, which they are always so lovely. So I was on CBS this morning and we were talking about what is the jury going to consider? I think the jury is going to have to consider, of course, likability, believability, but who stands to gain from this? Is it this plaintiff or is it Gwyneth Paltrow? And the court has left the bench during this break real quick. I love that he gets to walk off the bench and go right behind the partition. It's, it's very nice. He doesn't even have to walk out a door or anything. So while the court's on break, we're going to get to a few more questions. Um, let's see. So is Terry on the stand? Yes, but we are on break. So yes, but we are on break. Um, let us continue on. Um, Julie said this testimony is hard for me. Went on a cruise and triggered a rare neurological disorder. It's devastating to lose the person you used to be. That is devastating. And I can only imagine how frustrating that must be. Um, let me see. I'm going to switch to another feed that doesn't go to break quite that way. Give me one second chat as I find a different feed to monitor. So some of the feeds have closed captioning. Some of them don't. Uh, this one now has closed captioning again. So I try to make sure that we have the best court feed. Um, this court feed frustratingly went to just a blank screen. I want to watch the court because they don't always come back. Uh, the court feeds that go to ads don't always come back the same way. So I just grabbed that. Um, so as we get going with questions, I just want to remind you, for those of you that are new here, there's almost 35,000 of you here. I assume some of you are. If you want to keep up to date with my live trial coverage and the other things I am covering, lawnardalert.com. Y'all have crashed this website like seven times. They keep telling me they've fixed it. So if you have not signed up to lawnerdalert.com, um, go ahead and either see if you can break my, my site again or sign up to stay in the loop. This is my email list. It is internal use only. We do not sell your email addresses or anything like that. Never would. It's so we can communicate with you because our text messaging system does not work internationally. And so many of you are around the world. I can see it in where you're listening to the podcast and where you're watching the channel. And then you will be kept in the loop for things like this. The Law Nerd Shop launched new shit. I'm very excited about it. Bring the jury. I have questions. Our I have questions. Stickers are more embroidered hoodies. Um, the purple hoodies are here. It is, it is all of the things. So you can go get those at Law Nerd Shop. So when you're in the Law Nerd Alert, you will get the heads up on things like that. So many of you have already enjoyed those things from the shop. Um, Kathy said, Emily, are you a lefty? I can show you how to use your coffee cup for a righty. Let me know. I am a lefty, um, when I am streaming. 
So when I am streaming, I shift the way that the lid goes onto my coffee. So I don't knock my coffee into the, into the microphone, but I write with my right hand, but no, it's, it's just by nature of streaming by nature of streaming. Emily, didn't his daughter say girlfriend rang her to say she was leaving as he was aggressive and she could check in with him? Or did I mishear that? The girlfriend testified on day one. Her testimony is a bit different than Sanderson's testimony. It seemed that she has a different view of it. But then again, it's hard as humans to see ourselves the way other people see us. Right. So it's all a matter of perception. Um, I think I think that his version is maybe a little um, a little filtered and she testified the first day he was not in the court for that question from Kelly. Will the defense call Gwyneth Paltrow to the stand again? I don't know if they will, they can, but I don't know if they will. I think if I were them, I would wait to see how this testimony goes. And then I would decide on it. That would how that would be how I would do it. If I were the attorneys here, um, Jim said, just some love to thank you for answering my non super chat question. I try to do that as much as I can love listening to you. Your chat is so much better than well, others. <laughs> it is. We have the best chat on the internet. I don't joke about that. Um, Chloe Wesley said, I've worked in a TBI clinic, um, TBI traumatic brain injury. They present in massively different ways. He, his being articulate is not indicative of no TBI. I, I completely agree with you. And I don't disagree with you. My brain started to say both things at once. But I wonder how it will come across to the jury based on the picture his daughters painted of his ability. So his daughters painted a much more dire picture of his capability. And I think painting a less dire picture saying, look, sometimes it seems as if he's himself and then all of a sudden it switches or he gets lost or this or that might have helped. I think the way his daughters painted the picture of him is much different than what I'm seeing on the stand. Like the impression I was left with from his daughter's testimony is different than what I'm seeing now. That's where the disconnect is for me. I don't know, chat, if you feel the same way about that. But yes, everything presents differently and he could be completely fine and linear for a while and then struggle with something else. Um, so somebody asked, Colleen asked, Emily, can you visualize a trip to the airport, see the road in your mind? No, not at all. Um, I know where I need to go when I'm there, but no, I can't see it. Um, which is also, I think I just, I just do not have visual memory, but, um, the extent of my brain processes are, are still a mystery to me that I'm always exploring. I didn't know what time blindness was until a friend mentioned it. I'm like, that makes sense. Um, Oki, Texas girls said, follow up. I'm sure it would be hard for my dad to hear my testimony of his behavior too. And it would be hard to sit through, but it wouldn't change it. I agree. Um, I, I, I agree. I just, I don't know how the jury will take it, but I also understand him saying, I just want my daughters to be able to testify without worrying about me sitting there looking at them, but he wasn't there for the doctors either. So we'll see. Emily, will you talk about Gwyneth Paltrow and the school bus about GPs and school bus? I, in, in, I need more context for that, Marjorie. In what context? It looks like the judge is coming back to the bench, so we will see. I don't know the context because it's not coming in at this trial. Um, e, I'm not going to try to read all those numbers. I hope that's not a phone number. Um, I disagree with this testimony because it is clear he still traveled afterwards and enjoyed life. I was in a hospital for five weeks and recovery for 12 months. I still came back to who I was. And the jurors are going to have their own life experiences with things too. Bring me up, move to publish the deposition, and then bring me up on this. Oh, I have two audio. Because it's really slowed things down. Wait, I'm hearing other audio. Hold on. From my deposition with Mr. Sanderson, I I suspect there's going to be that kind of slowness too, and I'd rather just bring it up. Yes, sir. We don't think it's proper. Do it the normal way, which is uh, they read the deposition. Yep. Uh, but they don't show it. I think I'll permit it on because this is a party. 
uh, and under Rule 32, it can be used oh. for any purpose. I thought he meant for the other witnesses. And as long as, you know, the, the, the section that you're using for impeachment, Mr. Owens, is the only section that's appearing up there. We'll do it. All right, yes, we're okay with that. I, I thought he was talking about some of the other witnesses that we're preparing. Ruby, I'm sorry for that. Thank Not you for sharing your experiences yet. with us we in the chat. We'll find out if Kerry Oaks is going to be offered. Ooh. We could bring in the jury. Pardon? We could bring in the jury. Okay. Let's call let's them in. Get moving. Oh. Wait, your co counsel. Yes, yes, you did. Your Honor, we have copies of the They're, copies they're of the fighting with each other at the table. Actually, it was three sittings and. Can we go put them up there, yes. one, two, three, and give you a copy? Yes. You mind? Owen is like, this can is we Peter. just do all of this? I love that the, attor the other attorney... These are for the court. On the plaintiff side, one of the attorneys wants to ask the judge things, and the other attorney is like, no, no, no. That's not what we're doing. <sighs> if you're putting it up on the screen, I mean, for the witness, they may not need to actually go into this. Uh, that may save you some time, but but put them there. Just JP, in case thank the you. Needs them. <laughs> From the thirteen-year-old, these lawyers are cringe, and this guy needs to just let it go. I wonder how many jurors feel the same way, because the lawyers have been special. Like they've got shticks. This is this is a group of lawyers where everybody's got a shtick, and it's interesting to see. Uh, Daphne said, Emily, I love watching trials with you. I cannot watch a trial without you now. <laughs> love your commentary. Well, thank you. I mean, we're here. We're here. I didn't expect to be here for all of this trial, but I think we've only got a few more days. It's going to be fine. Um, Emily, not being able to see things in your head is called, I can't pronounce that. Um, recently discovered it, it was a neurodivergent trait, changed my life, realizing I wasn't just not trying hard enough to visualize. It's like that scene in um, mall rats where the kid walks up and is like, it's a schooner. And he's like standing there trying to see the sailboat and those like nineties dot pictures. And he's like, it's not a schooner. It's a sailboat. <laughs> um, and she's like, a schooner is a sailboat. That's how I feel trying to visualize things. Um, I'm also bad at Tetris. Like my spatial awareness is terrible. The fact that I played a sport with a ball is amazing to me. Oh. It wasn't you who broke it. I've got one side higher than the other, but that's what it does. I don't know. That's the lean inside. But everything else functions well on it. Okay. Good. I think they're talking about the oh. chair. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Tell you what, just leave it. We'll, we'll, we'll work Move around on. it. Move on, yes. Okay. All right. So let's get back to some of the things that you've noticed. Um, we've heard from others, but I want to hear from you. Yes. Um, there is an amount of time each side has to present their case. I don't know what it is in this case. The collision. But that's why. That, that you've noticed. There's no question. I have a much wider range of yeah, temperament than I had before. What does that mean, wider range? What about your social life? Do you, before, before the ski accident, what kind of things did you do? You know, I, I look back in the last couple of years, in fact, I did that. and. I just realized I was in the groove of my life at that stage. I had a lady in my life that I dearly loved, and um, we just did everything together and spent, I believe it was two years together, and had cleaned up our lives and physically great shape. Both of us liked to hike and walk and travel and really we're enjoying our lives. And we spent some time in St. George. I don't know what he means by cleaned up our lives. Time here. Did you do the whole 30? I've got questions. We cleaned up the businesses of homes and combining homes and parents' homes. And, and we had- Simplified? She, as I hope everybody noticed, she is an amazing woman. And so I had a great deal of connection with her. And, and so since the car, or the car, excuse me, uh, the ski accident, Yes. Do you still go and do fun things and have that? Which zest you're for allowed. Life? You're allowed to go do things after you I've suffer been something like this. I've self-imposed. Ninety percent. This is not in the house. A this, recluse. Self-imposed recluse. This is not going to go just well. Not feeling as fun. Not feeling as engaged in other things. Not just don't have that 
same spark I had and don't feel the same about when I go to places. Um, you still travel. I can understand not feeling you know, as safe, I have though. Tra because what? Let's put it. Let, let's talk about travel for a minute. Yes. Be before the ski collision, did you do a lot of travel? A lot of travel. It happened to be something that Carlene liked to do, and so we we traveled a lot. It sounds like Went you on liked the only cruise that two, I was ever two. on um, before the crash. And yes, we had, and we had more plans. Did you ever travel alone? More, the ski? more I did. plans. I did close captioning. Alone more plans. Places. Yes. Okay. What about since the ski collision? Have you still traveled? I have traveled. Don't back away from it. It's just the truth. It's part of the problem. You're allowed um, to. I'm just easily confused about things. Um, so I usually request having somebody else along. Also because of this funny aberrant foot thing, wanting to go its own way. I don't feel as safe. And then also, um, yeah, things would happen. Like I put the wrong name I get their name spelled wrong and important flight tickets and and the birth date which I should know so it was it was difficult and I really wanted someone to go with me I didn't feel as secure of traveling alone have you traveled alone since the ski accident I have not I had one time when um, a, a friend one friend, there's actually two, but I had one friend when we had planned a trip to Europe, a physician's assistant and um, a, a, my yoga instructor. And she decided right before the trip, um, Terry, I don't like you anymore. I don't know what's different. You're a different person. I don't like you anymore. And how, canceled her. How'd that make you feel? It was like, the daughter talked about the yoga oh incident. Gosh. I'd known her as long, and one other one as well, as long as I've lived here, almost. Five years, I'm guessing, at that time. And it's like personality. Like That's something that develops from the time you're a child. How, what do you do about a personality issue? Something's changed. I'm, I don't know, more aggressive. And you know what? That lady will not answer her phone or text. How many times and have you I tried to phone and text, though? Well, we're not going to say her name on, on no, this big broadcast. No, so we are not. Gonna, we're not gonna She's a that. lovely lady. Yes, she is. Have, have How many times have you tried to call and text? As well? Yes. His daughter um, talked about another this. Another lady that I knew for quite some time, a sweetheart also of a woman. Um, we just got off kilter a little bit. Well, after Carlene, after I told Carlene she had to run, um, it was a few weeks later. I couldn't realize how lonely I was. Yes, I should have taken more time to absorb that, but I was so lonely because we were together all the time. So I reached out to her, and we spent a couple of things, to, activities together, and I couldn't believe the words that came out of her mouth. She said, Terry? This is hearsay. It, it is. It is hearsay, so we can't. You can't. It's kind of going to said. impression, but, but how did it make you feel? This is going well. Well, it's not really offered for the truth, though. Counsel, you could like fight a little harder on that. It's explaining how do I fix my personality. How it's do I explaining fix it a different person. What happened? It's a pretty complex issue, and I lose self confidence. The person I am, I'm going. What happened? Terry, are you trying to improve yourself? Steve, I've been we've in got denial. you. I've been in denial about my issue. I refuse to believe I have brain issues. I've just done everything I can. I knew I had a critical window to restore stuff, and I did everything I was told and everything I could find out about trying to get those neurons reconfigured in a good way. And it's I hard. Found it's helped, so I'm still in denial. I keep thinking there's got to be something. Are you trying to? I find that yourself? very. Yes, I don't very want true. to have brain issues. I'm trying to prove I don't have it. Everything I do, I'm trying to prove I don't have that wrong with me. There's been yeah. a lot of discussions about how Terry was before this ski collision. Well, he doesn't know he wasn't. Um, and in could court. you put up Defense Exhibit 23, please? And I'm actually going to move forward the admission of the entire Defense Exhibit 23. I'm assuming there's no objection.
you're assuming. Does any of this need to be redacted? So, I appreciate the court being uh, mindful after these lawyers just say, have not been super mindful. My understanding was that Ms. Van Orman was going to be done at 11. Oh I my God, Owens! Moving for uh, defense exhibit Calm 23. Calm down. No. Okay, so it's received. Owens is mad because he has seven witnesses lined up today and he has people flying in and weather to deal with. I'm not showing those. And he's real frustrated about it. Um, he was told it would be an hour this morning from when the jury came in. So they're the starting to that, eat into his schedule. Do you have that exhibit in front of you? I think I do, yes. Um, yes, I think I do. I imagine right. that Owens is wearing a mask because he's under the weather. That would be my guess. Um, that happens in court. People get sick when they're in trial and they still have to go. There's the address there. Yep, thank you. So. Do you see where it says chief complaint down at the bottom? Owens. Owens is yes, the chief complainer. Yes. It says regular visit. Yes. Was this a I'm regular teasing. visit that you were attending with, um, with, with your provider? Um, it, it could be. I, I, I don't know. I usually saw her once a year or once every six months. So if that's what it says, I believe that's. Okay. And just for reference, Terry, I know you weren't here, but this is the I'm getting old exhibit that I'm getting old visit. Could you go to the next page, please? All, all of Defense 23. I have nothing in front of me now. It, it's coming. Don't worry. Oh. I think that's fair, though. He's like, All right, um, so this is the second page of that exhibit. Talks about 69-year-old male with HTM, HLD. We're not going to go through all of those <laughs> yeah. things, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Um, OSA, ED, prostate just cancer. Just got over a, a URI. Do you know what a started URI Started cryotherapy is? May 2021. Migraines. I do. Re what is it? Upper respiratory disease. infection. Okay. So you just got over that yesterday, you think, at least according to this record. No cough, just runny nose um, and upper respiratory symptoms. This is going to be his test for the cough, had not had a persistent cough, et cetera. Weight gain, thinks eating out too much. Were you eating out too much? <laughs> yes. Um, Carlene and I chose to eat out instead of cook. Okay. And not getting enough exercise. Yes. Think you're, thinks you've gotten old all of a sudden. Terry, what does that mean? Did you tell no, your doctor that? No, what did you mean? No, what did you mean? What did you mean? I relate it to the URI. If someone who's just gotten over a viral or bacterial infection, either one, over two weeks with a cough and just feeling worn out, I wouldn't doubt I wouldn't say something like that. Most and in fact, would. it says, does not think depressed, mood is good, just not doing the things you used to, but also thinks you're going to start skiing again and re reinstate your gym membership. Did you have a plan? It says, seem to yes, be consumed with paperwork. Right. Hold on, go back. That, that's all I need for that. I also understand um, the relationship. Talk about planning, fluff. and I meant to ask you like, about yeah, we're in a relationship, we're going to go out to eat on. and do the fun things. Um, the problem is I've been married do 20 you years. Have, so do you know what executive anymore. functioning means? I do. Yes, I'm familiar with that term actually. I do. What, what's your understanding? Cheers, I do. It it's ability to coordinate your actions through your life, to be able to put things together, make decisions about them, get things done, and be efficient and effective, and be able to multitask. And, I don't want to uh, ever multitask. Be effective. Be and efficient and effective. Why are we approaching about executive functioning? I, I want to hear along. talk more about it. All right. I guess we're approaching. Um, I'm going to continue answering questions and comments. Okie Texas girl said, definitely. I agree. I was just saying, I know it would be hard, but I have wanted uh, my dad to be there because it was his trial. I completely understand. We are on the same page. Sarah said, my dad died of Lewy body dementia, uh, which is the definition of cognitive decline on speed. Um, until nothing works, it's insulting to me, which I don't, Sarah, I missed which part is insulting, but everyone's experience is different. Um, just wanted to say this trial is extremely depressing as a person with TBI. People take a lot for granted. Little TBI issues add up and maddening to live. And I, again, I don't disagree with you. I think 
and I, I've thought throughout this whole trial that, you know, I don't think his doctors are wrong. I think he has noticed changes. It's whether or not Gwyneth Paltrow caused those changes, whether or not those changes are all due to the ski collision or not, and and whether the jury will believe him that his changes are substantial. What I think is interesting um, is that when his daughters describe him and the way he describes him is completely different. And his lawyer did a good job asking him, so, Terry, you don't want this to be a reality, right? And he said he that he didn't. That, so that means to you, how the ski like collision happened versus whether he's you were able to make a plan in is different and kind of follow through with that. Have so, you been able to do that? They're going to address his the age. CFC. They're going to have to. The examples of not being able to do that are one of my collections I keep track of, of all the things I want to do and can't do, and there's thousands. There's How do you keep 12, track? I guess I should say 1,200 or 1,500 items on my to-do list. When I had, I look back to 2016, it repeats every day, whatever changes I make. I look back to 2016 and there were half a dozen, dozen back there, which is Stephen Covey's rule, right? That's what you get done, you mark them as priorities and get them done. It's just now continuous stuff. I don't get done. We're just getting shit and done. I can't tackle because I can't figure it out. It's just goofy. I, the things that I could do, I was really handy. My dad was a handy man, and I learned, and I have the tools. I have an example. You know what? I would love to hear the example, but I have made a promise. Go for so it. I want to shift gears. Let's do it. At some she shouldn't point, have made that promise, um, but trials after run long, the ski accident, and Owens has to deal with that. Passed, and there was a press conference that was held. This I want to hear much yes. more about. Yes. Okay. I wasn't involved in that. I wasn't even your lawyer at the time. Council, was the press conference your idea? The council's Absolutely like, not. this shit's not my idea. Do you know why the press conference was held? Your Honor, that's... Is he waiving his attorney-client privilege? Because <laughs> if he is, I'm going to... Ask about it. ...drive a bus through that. What's the, what's the objection, Council? He just violated his own attorney-client privilege. Whose idea it was? Council, that's not an objection. Ruled as to relevance. That's not an objection. What is your understanding as to why a press conference was held? Owens, don't we signal what you're going to do. Just do it later. How important it would be. And I hold on. I don't want you <laughs> to discuss talk about anything that you you talked about. He with just your did. Counsel. Thank you. Okay. Did you have an understanding why a press conference was held? Yes. Yeah, Owen said he's going to drive a bus knew through that. That it was very important to have a video. Owen, bus of is the wrong example, Owens. Activity. It would just be convincing and would settle this beyond all doubt. Like a GoPro. Exactly like a GoPro. But all the other cameras up there, there had to be somebody. And that's what I knew. In fact, I even looked recently and put up a notice at Deer Valley if anybody had a copy. After that press conference, did any GoPro videos surface? No, none. Has, so has, that's has why you held the go no, the, the press conference to help Terry, to hope you somebody had video. Did you with Ms. Paltrow? Oh, good. Let's ask this. Absolutely not. I swear to my God and my family and my other father in heaven, it's like, no, no, I did not. Why did you bring this lawsuit? Your daughters talked about their truth and her truth, Strike and now we've got his God. Religious oaths here. S sustained. And Why did you bring this? The jury this? should disregard the last part of the last response. The, my God. Why did you bring this lawsuit? You know, I, I realized after a period of time. Three years. That couple. no one believed how serious my injuries were. Uh, Just because I did wasn't out and interacting continuously didn't mean there was something any wrong with me. I really, really wanted an opportunity. I knew there was damages. And then there was lots of insults added to that singular incident. Lots of insults along the way, dozen of other times where everything went contrary to my value system. And I just went, you know what? My daddy would say, if you got the truth, you bring the truth, don't let anybody back you down. And that's what I felt I needed to do. And I'm here to prove that truth with facts. That's all I have. Thank you. So he's been insulted you, and Norman. he's not believed on how serious his injuries are, which for people who don't have visible injuries, 
is a struggle. If you have a TBI and people don't understand why you're doing something, it's a so challenge. I'm kind of keeping my distance from people. He said, I have a cold. Um, this is something people struggle with with unseen illnesses all the time. But that doesn't mean it's Paltrow's fault. It doesn't mean she caused it. I don't doubt that he feels insulted and that he feels like he is struggling and his life is different Sorry, because people be wiping my nose a little. can't perceive how difficult it is, but it makes him With sound climate angry and that's and not dry air. her I might fault. have a bloody nose. You live in Utah, sir. Is there a question yes. pending <laughs> about your bloody nose? So he wants his story to be heard and he wants, what, a jury to validate that he's injured? All right, let's talk about a few things. <sighs> okay. Sir, can... Owens. Oh, gosh. So we're not going to get done with you today because uh, we have witnesses this afternoon, but I think we can go till noon. Is that all right with you? Yes, yeah, sure. Whatever you like. They're going to split his cross. Did you ever say to me, I don't know, did his statement make him seem like he's bitter? I don't know, you guys tell me. It. I wrote, I'm famous because it's cool that I had a collision with a celebrity. Was that your thinking at the time? And you said yes. Do you deny it? I, not if you have it on record, no, I don't deny it. I don't remember it. But well, let's go it. to page 15. Can you bring that up? Move to publish the deposition. Which Your I, Honor, he said he doesn't deny it, so why are we publishing? Because he earlier denied it. He so did. I'll, I'll overrule the, obje er, the objection and he permit denied that it portion to of the deposition to be published. Yeah, May he I ask it when this counsel. happened? Sure. Like one hour ago, two hours ago, you told this jury I never asking, thought it Owens, was cool no, he that was I had asking a about the original with a statement. celebrity. Do you recall that? Yeah, I, yes, I guess I did say that, absolutely. On your and testimony. that's not a true statement, is it? You have, you have said this in your deposition, true? Honestly, I don't ever remember saying it. Bring right. it up but but I, right. Don't, just, I don't doubt you. I misspeak a lot. That's a fair hey, explanation. This is page 15. I just don't know what the jury's going to think. Through eight. Man, I'm trying to so the words, I'm on, famous, this is my question, seem to say, I think it's cool that I had a collision with a celebrity. Was that your thinking at the time? And your answer was yes, I guess, yes. Yes, I guess, yes. Now let's go to your weight. You testified today that you were 163 and 5'5. Five five. True? Yes, I did. And uh, do you agree that at your deposition, you told me you were 175 to 180 and 5'8"? Yes or no? Um, That's a big difference. Yes or no? That man's not 5'8". Qualified, yes. No, I don't want to qualify. I don't Did care you what you that? want, like Owens. Said, how much do you weigh? And you said 175, 80. How much did you weigh? And then you said 5'8". How high are you? How what tall is, are you? What do his medical records Three say? Three inches different. That man's right? not 5'8". I eight. just found that out. I didn't realize. I've had Sir, people telling me that. Honestly. you told this jury... <gasps> Owens, that don't the be a of dick, the accident, man. You were 163 and 5'5". <laughs> five five. Did you not, like, two hours ago? I did, yes. Owens! Yes. But you told me in your deposition years ago... Owens is going to make this guy more likable to the jury. to 180 and 5'8". Five five like this. True? How many years ago did we do this? Three I've years lost, ago. I've lost a lot of weight. I'm down to my yes. usual weight. You know we're interested not now in your weight today. We're interested in your weight on the day. Thank you. I knew where that was going. Do you going. agree you were 5'8"? Yes. Have you shrunk three uh, inches? I couldn't believe it either. I, w I wanted to argue because I think I'm 5'8 yet. You, have, you do have degenerative back disease I and those, those discs are I've getting always, squeezed. Oh. Is that why? He wants to, to yes. do a trial I've against getting been, old. Five, eight and a half, and I knew I shrunk a half an inch, but three, wow. Mr. Sanderson, we're trying in counsel, let's not speak on top Thank of you. one another Thank so you. that we have a clear, clean record. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. 
when uh, we talked about you being unconscious, and do you agree that someone who's unconscious doesn't have a stopwatch to figure out? How okay, long I've got to say something real quick. Unconscious. I agree. That's Hold on, Owens. We got to we got to pause you for a second. Here's the thing. Do you guys remember? Uh, when the female attorney was going on about Gwyneth Paltrow and Gwyneth Paltrow's height, et cetera, et cetera, she had Owens stand next to her, not Owens, uh, plaintiff stand next to her. And she said to Gwyneth Paltrow, I'm five, five, and I'm in three inch heels. And then ask if she was the same height as this, uh, plaintiff. And they were about the same height. So maybe he is in that five, seven range and his other lawyers are quite tall because she said, I'm in three inch heels. So I just wonder if he's not actually five, five standing there today because the lawyer was standing next to him saying that she was in three inch heels and she's five, five. So what? Five, five, six, seven, eight. So five, eight. And they were the same height. So, or did she say, Jackie's like, she said she needed th five inch heels. She needed three inch heels to reach five, five. See, this is why we've got a chat. So five, five with three inch heels. He, he didn't seem super tall. She said she was five one. Thanks chat. I didn't remember. That's why we had to pause and have a chat about it. She said four inch heels. <laughs> she said I'm five, five and four inch heels. So they did look the same type. Um, so there we go. Let's continue on. It's true. Everything you've learned. He thinks he's still five, eight. He Craig said after, after the close. Okay. Four inch heels to get no. to five, five. Yeah, that's over vague, and uh, that's uh, I'll withdraw it because I I agree that's not everything. Wrong. It's not everything. Sure. Right, right. He just withdrew his own question instead of striking it because he agreed that it was too vague. As he saw the plaintiff looking at him with confusion, this is going to be a long cross. As far as level of uh, length of unconsciousness, do you agree that uh, you you were they were about the same height? So thank you, Chad. I have no idea. Yeah, and yet you you did tell people. It varied over time. First a few seconds, then five minutes, then 10 minutes. You did that, right? I, Do you disagree? Y yes, it did vary. Do, and why did you do that? Why would you say, I don't know, then it's a few seconds, then it's five minutes, and then you told your psychiatrist at the VA it was up to 10 minutes long. And he doesn't Why did know you that. change? I had know. no idea, and I was searching. I, I really had no idea, and I was trying to answer. I sometimes make that mistake of guessing, but I really didn't know. That's and it was to try answer, to get the attention guessing. of the doctor. Do you remember telling me that? I don't. I, I, don't, I don't know how to. Let's but, find it. Owens is going to make this plaintiff more likable. What's the date? Let's go to page 95. <clears throat> Which deposition? One, two, or three? One. They're they're all cumulative, so the page. There are will three tell you depositions. That. Page ninety-five, starting at. Yeah, Owens is coming across quite dislikable. The key to a good uh, cross-examination is to answer the ask the questions seven. in a pointed way, but not have the jury hate you as the questioner. When you first tell your health care providers, and if they hate seconds, him as the questioner, later it turned into five. They're minutes, going to like and plaintiff later it more. Turned into ten minutes. Do you know that you gave varying answers to people? And then his and then varying answers don't bother me that page, much because we know he's had a brain injury. Yes. The witness says. It's just whether or not it matters. And then can we go to the middle paragraph? Yes, I do. And that was referencing the fact I personally did not know. I was a witness to how. I was not a witness to how long I was unconscious. Right, because of course he wouldn't be. And so somebody told me it was two seconds, and somebody said it was 10 seconds, 10 minutes. And so I was, I didn't know. It was hard for me to say. This is not helping then, your case, next though. Next paragraph. This helps his case. It depends on my visit. If I want to make a deal out of it, uh, and that was the reason for my visit, then I might say for 10 minutes. I might pick the worst. That's kind of how we are. We go to the doctor's attention. We, excuse me, we go to get the doctor's attention about a specific thing. And it wasn't at that point how long I was unconscious was not a point of relevance. So he was exaggerating to get the doctor's attention. That's your testimony, correct? I'm even confused by those statements, so. Right. 
Yes or no? Uh, yes, it is. By the way, when we took your deposition, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of formality to it. Two, you're placed under oath just like the one you were put on today. Yeah. And uh, your counsel's present, and you've been able to, you were able to talk to them before. Yes? And I think I had, what, yes. 11 hours or so of deposition? I can't really hear you, sir, but my, my question is you had your advice of yes. your counsel. Yes, his demeanor there. has yes. changed on the stand. And uh, <clears throat> I asked at the beginning of the deposition, is there any reason why you can't give me your best testimony today? And you said yes. no. Owens? Correct? Yes. Owens and, uh, has done this I three even told times you, with I this think dude. That if you testify differently at your deposition, then uh, you you would in front of this jury. I would call it to their attention. Do you recall this? Yes. I'm sure you told him that, Owens. Do you hear him sigh? You sound like me. <laughs> and He's you like... took an oath, and you <laughs> you then had the opportunity Owens. to make any changes to your deposition transcript. Is that true? Um. Yes. And did you? No, I don't remember making any changes. I think I made two with As you. Owens is getting more aggressive, um, Sanderson has gotten and, a little more meek, that I which I think is going to play okay. well for Sanderson. You didn't, and you didn't make some fighting and, uh, back the way we saw told you, let's, like an let's Amber Heard fight back those. to cross. I haven't looked at these depositions at all. He's not fighting back at all. Not at all. And it's going to make you the jury like that, this plaintiff uh, more. Well, I heard you call Eric Christensen a Deer Valley instructor for 40 years, a bully. Did you say that? I did say that, yes. And that he was yelling at your face. Yes. Your face was in the snow, I sir. I figured out. And I didn't we'll, actually know that until. And we'll meet that at, we'll meet him at one o'clock. Uh, Deer Valley's known, or at least puts itself out there, doesn't it, as like the most customer friendly they could possibly be it's very agree? bougie i agree but i think all of skiing is kind of bougie it's expensive were your skis on or off at the end of the collision do you know absolutely they were on okay absolutely. so you do remember some things after yes okay and uh craig you by the way, you said you weren't here for your daughters, but you haven't been here for several days. Lindsay, y'all can several statements, swear in the right? chat, but Google sometimes yes. grabs it. It was more it, than as just as like, I don't want to make my daughters but uncomfortable. You sometimes been Google here for grabs it. You didn't. Yeah. And uh, Sam Goldstein said part of the reason is you don't take criticism well. Do you agree with that statement? I always, the best mama bear, I that's fair. I always want to be a better person, and I thought I, I thought I, I even tell my kids, if I'm doing something wrong, tell me, I want to be better. Oh, I don't believe that. All right, so do you agree His or disagree is different with this statement? Uh, Mr. Sanderson does not take criticism well. Ouch. Hard for me to measure that. I've not been around other humans as much as I have been in the past. So it's hard for me to measure that. Honestly, I don't. You don't know if you take criticism well or not? Do you agree not? that when Whitney uh, came with the toboggan, mm -hmm. She asked you what happened, and you said, I, wonder I don't know. Do you agree with that statement? Um, I, if, if that's on the record, I don't disagree with it. I don't remember that particular part of our interaction. I just remember she said something to me. and It's the first question, right? Ski patroller comes up. By the way, you've hurt, hurt yourself before. Can you ask skiing, not a compound true? question? Never but, needing, never needing help, right? Get before this up. incident, though, you injured your knee. I had when I first learned to ski that first year. All right, Beaver. Mm -hmm. So, you don't dispute that the first thing Whitney asked you was like, "How are you?" And what happened? Do you agree? Those are like the first two questions. We don't know if Whitney's going to testify I have or not. No recollection of those questions. There's been argument about that. I don't. So we'll see. I would think she would reach out to me, but. I don't did you ever complain to Deer Valley about Eric Christensen, like I was treated like a bully? I had a lot of time to think about it. Yes or no? I don't know if I did. I wasn't, I think when I contacted Deer Valley, I, I was just yeah. after I wanted to find out who hit me and I wanted to copy the records and I didn't mean bring it up. Yeah, you never once wrote to Deer Valley like, hey, 
your your I do uh, not recover well. ski instructor is a total follow SOB the, to follow me. the instructions and rest. Poorly. That's correct. I didn't bring it up because I did not want to cause some anger from them. I wanted to copy and find out who hit me. But seven years later, you're here saying he was terrible to me, just terrible. Uh, Ramon. Well, he's gotten very quiet. Craig Ramon said words to the effect that. Um, Christensen said to Ramon, your buddy took out Gwyneth Paltrow. Did you hear those words? I did. You I personally heard them with your, so now I want to be clear because I'm not trying to confuse you. Did you hear them when you were on the ski no. slope? He, he asked uh, better questions, get better answers, okay. Owens. And Ramon did not do anything to try to set the record straight at that point. Do you know anything about that? About who hit me? Correct. When we got down into the into at the that medical point care. was yeah. my question yeah. on the mountain yeah. on the mountain but in the shed I was okay you said your skis were on after the collision do you recall your head the being ski downhill filed or uphill? a report absolutely downhill I was going down and absolutely. we'll see the ski instructor so several report witnesses again say the opposite and you it's disagree I disagree absolutely because I couldn't get up and where was he sued Deer uh, Valley head, at the beginning as well head when she came to arrest head have, down head I, up i have no idea as far as i know she didn't exist because you didn't see anything i was out i had no idea everything else is what i heard did you tell eric christensen according to his report that she appeared right in front of me yes or no 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 so he just Never. made that up must have Deer because Valley just uh, uh, falsified the record. Is that your opinion? I never would have said that. I knew where it came from. You know you sued Deer Valley in this claim. True. There we go. Yes. Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Sustained. He already answered it. And we're not dealing with any of that today. It was sustained. True. We're what? not dealing with. Why are we? Why are we getting into? Move to strike. Sustain the the question is stricken and the jury should disregard. Yeah, so, Owens. Honor, what are we doing? I just want to be able to ask. I know what you want to. Is, you don't you're get not to suing Deer Valley today. Oh God! Honor, In front objection. of the jury, it's so Third improper. Third objection now. Move to strike. It's so Again. improper. Instruct Sustained, the jury. Stricken. Okay. Disregard, please. S Owen's like, I just want to do this. And so he says it, says it in front of the jury. I hear you it. saying he says you, it in front going, of the jury you were flying through the air. With complete disregard. After she hit you. Did you say those words? Owen's. Yes today? Or, yes or no? Today? Today. Today I did. He knows better, and he just doesn't give a fuck. With regard to... Um, relationships prior you had two divorces true I did yes and then uh, was it about 10 years of just dating various different other women I guess I wouldn't know exactly wouldn't be unreasonable maybe well I'm just saying if the act incident occurred in 2016 when was your second divorce he casually just dropped your second about 10 divorce. years earlier I'm thinking 30 years ago, I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, uh, it's nice that C Carlene, you'd found a nice partner, but uh, you were not engaged. Is that true? We were not. And she was had. actually living hundreds of miles away from you? We went back and forth. It's three hours, four hours maybe, the most. Aaron, thank you so much. A couple hundred miles, I think, isn't it? I don't know. So Saint what? St. George. We'll let it, we'll move on. I've actually been to St. George. There's a Tesla charging station there. Do you recall saying uh, that you agreed that saying I'm famous was a crazy thing to say? I think Agree? it's after Beaver. Absolutely, it's not me. Because there's a place that has a bunch of I Love Beaver I'm merch that. on the way but to St. George. But it was you, right? Just to be clear. When you it's say it wasn't funny. me, it, it was in fact you. It's the other personality that's inhabiting my body right now. It wasn't me. And you blame Gwyneth Paltrow for that. Yes. Shorty came in and no she question. caught me red-handed. Do you recall having a kind of a stroke event like 10 years or so before the incident? 
yeah, but that diagnosis had been changed. But what? it's an ischemic retinal occlusion? Probably due to a migraine. And you lost your right eye in that? I lost some vision in that eye, yes. And uh, that was one of the reasons you, re you retired? One of many. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in terms of your anger, uh, do you agree you sought therapy for anger management about 10 years ago? I don't. Or 15 years ago. I guess 06, about the time of your uh, second he divorce. He blames Gwyneth Paltrow for after the collision. I'm going to pull it up. I don't he remember does that not purpose, but it, relate yes, I, okay. to okay. after the collision. He shrinker? sees it as someone else. So you can't ask me questions, unfortunately. Sorry. Thank you. All I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have you say yes or no, and then we go to documents if we need to. So do you agree that he's you were saying, seeing a therapist he's saying that at the he VA doesn't, for anger management? He doesn't recognize himself. Years, That's what he's saying. He's not incident. diagnosing <clears throat> only. I honestly don't Multiple remember what you say, so I, I, I believe you. Yeah, I can't testify. Uh, so if you I dispute it, then we go to the record. <laughs> I can look at these records. I have it. 5,000 pages. So you don't dispute it? I don't. Okay. And but he is saying it's not him. But TBIs do that, and that's what the doctor said last week. But he's not related to it. Did you tell Shay that there was a GoPro recording? Absolutely not. That was her impression. Do you recall at the exact time of this event, <clears throat> going down the hill, you were sort of crossing over to the right. Does that sound accurate? No. You were always on the right? Red yes. hot, Amy Kate. Okay, yep. Christensen is going to testify this, at, uh, this Leslie afternoon. Leslie P., so I we'll think it was a very that. powerful point of this cross and, that he was in um, anger management well before. Do you agree in the five accident. seconds or so before the collision? Yep. There was a female skier, kind of beginner ish, on your left. Yes. And do you agree that? you actually tilted your head to the left to sort of confirm that you weren't going to hit her, that she would be okay. After the accident? Five seconds before the before, accident. Before, no. Did you so testify ever? I, I saw her, what I, re, what I, I don't know, what so, I remember is I always saw her. She always? was a little uncomfortable and I, I gave her a little always room, just kind of, what you do? And did Passing you, on your right? And did you hit? Did you turn because of your uh, right eye is blind? No. Did you turn toward her? No reason to. Look, you did not. No. Okay, we'll pull that up in uh, probably at our next visit. At our next visit, delightful sarcasm. All right, my ears are pissing me off today. <sighs> you texted about Whitney, the toboggan person. How, how happy you were with her, true? I did, yes. She was and fantastic, and five stars. We both read it, it's pretty articulate, pretty detailed, right? It is. You knew you were being subjected to a brain test, like a memory test. He perceived well, that. I'm not, okay, go ahead. Right, didn't, didn't you tell us that? He perceived that. When she that. said, I want you to remember some things. Yes, oh yes, absolutely. He perceived okay, that he was being were, checked for you were being subject to a brain oh, memory I've, test. I've never focused so hard. And you came through with flying colors, right? I did. Into them all. I did. Remember President Trump said they gave me five things to remember and I got them all. Do you remember this? I did not uh, have Trump on my fucking bingo card as being relevant to fucking anything. Owens, what is you happening? Called her a sweetheart and then she entertained you. And that was all really within oh my god a half hour of the incident a half what? hour of the collision is that true i don't remember the time frame uh, carlene may have been there by then i don't know she was helpful but it was at the base where the toboggan went down to yes that was uh that wasn't well tell me is that at the bottom of deer valley or oh. is that a mid-level mid -level, clinic i think i think it was mid -level. all right and is there so is there a picture of you two in a wheelchair smiling do you remember that picture? I haven't seen it. Ever? So? I don't remember seeing it, no. 
Shay mentioned it, that there was a picture of you, and maybe it was at the Instacare. Do you remember anyone, any, any picture of you in the Instacare in a wheelchair smiling? No, I don't. So? Okay, and I asked you about it, and you said, I just smiled because they told me. Uh, if somebody says smile. Someone said smile, and you smiled. I don't remember. Does this ring a bell from your deposition? It does not. I. Okay. But that's. So you took a picture of Whitney, right? I did. Composed that very nice email with all the details and then you sent it to your group probably i don't say i composed it i it could have had carlene challenge yeah i'm gonna need you to go and ahead and come well, in on Saturday, you did it though finish right you TPS you came reports. up with those exact words carlene didn't do that i mean it is agreed her. well she doesn't know she grew up in michigan that she's uh won the Deer Valley collision. Are they asking him to the land Deer the Valley plane again? Grand whatever <laughs> race, right? That's right. What are you uh, asking? Do you think Carlene was present at the Deer Valley Clinic? I, I know she, no, she wasn't at the Deer Valley Clinic. No, absolutely oh, not. Okay. No. Was I, when, when we I got home. misunderstood. She you. was on her way. Okay. Do you remember Carlene didn't buy into this? Was that your quotes in terms of your, uh, did you say those words just like an hour or two ago? He did. Carlene didn't buy into what, Mr. Owens? Well, that's what you said. Do you remember saying said. those words? She wasn't Chat, you asked if this. he would ask about it. What was the question? Here he is. It was uh, why your relationship with her deteriorated after the collision. She didn't buy into I, this, that's what you said. I misspoke, I absolutely, absolutely, I'm not sure I understand that. Okay. To be, be clear on that issue, and I realize I'm jumping around, but I'm keeping an eye on the clock. Did you, um, with regard to Carlene, it sounds like you shut it down. You shut the relationship down. Is that true? I made a very strong statement that she was going to be better off without me. Yes. And you told her that? Yes. So Carlene was here a couple of days ago and said, I, I, he never told me. Did you tell her? I, I had no idea I why. I told her what I said, what I said, what I, what I That's thought. That's how I he said remembers was, it. Carlene, I, you got to run. I don't want you stuck with me. That's what he remembers. That's not what Carlene said. And I knew you would stay by me. I know she would. So your next, then you started calling your daughters. It sounds like even before the I'm famous thing. Is that true? I don't remember that, honestly. Uh, Shay said she took a call from you about six something. Okay. So, so about six hours okay. later. She said the phone Have you ever showed. read her depositions? No. By the way, or Jenny's? No. I told him I wouldn't. Okay. And they had even expressed like, hey, Dad, we're, we're kind of concerned because we got to talk about you and how you were Bruno. growing up and that's things. why they're concerned we're, we're kind of concerned that it will hurt your feelings do you recall this i didn't know why but they never, i don't remember them telling me that i just i decided that before they don't want it to impact their relationship all right so i can understand that we got you're at the clinic you take a picture this is at this on on the Deer Valley Hill. You take a picture of Ramon and one of the other skiers, and they're all smiles. Did you know? I really that? wish we were talking about how this collision happened um, a bit more. Boy, that's a we little can, bit. A little bit. I do kind of remember that. I, uh -huh. can you bring I up still have, picture of Ramon? I do. I still have questions. This sure. is not a well executed cross because the and, points uh, that he's making kind of get lost. I don't lost. remember them being smiley smiles. Okay, we'll, <sighs> we'll pull people. it up here. Okay. And it's in a picture. Number D. It doesn't matter if he remembers I'm it or not, Owens. What is your point? You have literally like five minutes. A well-executed cross is one that is clear. This is very scattered. It makes it hard for me to follow. It's going to make it hard for the jury to follow. D. And it makes it seem, it makes the I plaintiff more it's sympathetic, I think. Go ahead. D87 received. It You're, might not remember, feel that way for I everyone. And I can give you a hard binder if you want. It looks Some like might feel like he's working. being more evasive. I do recognize that Some you might feel like, picture. no, he's had a brain injury and I he's confused. I recognize the picture and I probably did take <clears throat> it. Yeah. All right. Smile, you know. 
You're not smiling, though. What does this prove? <clears throat> when you went uh, to... People don't perceive the severity the of head injuries uh, all of the time. Do you have a personal memory of that? All the time, people misperceive the severity of head injuries. I, there I is no serve here, right. Owens. Okay, I think the physician assistant's coming tomorrow, but he wrote no, no signs of confusion. Oh. Uh, do you dispute that? No. no I don't, wasn't there. I, not him. Do you agree that in your post-collision talk with Shay about six hours after the incident, you told her, I'm okay? That would be me. I, my yes. parents didn't find out I was divorced until the last day. I don't want to put them through that misery. I don't share my information. All right, so let me, I think that's a yes, but I'm going to re-ask it because we need to get it clear. At six o'clock, just hours, six hours after the collision, did he you told tell them your he was daughter okay. Shay, I'm okay? Yes? Yes. Asked and answered. Thank you. Who are you Over thinking? Ruled. And then on the hill, on the hill itself with the accident he had four broken ribs just clearly he's not minutes. okay owen that's not a serve that someone asked you are you okay that is absolutely beyond a doubt wrong no one spoke to me when i was needing help no one stopped no one so your testimony is eric christensen just sat there and looked at an unconscious man for several minutes is that your testimony Yes, he That's never said testimony. one word to me that I recall. Like, How do you know? Maybe when he got me up. Oh, no, I haven't so made up my mind. Ramon, I'm like this he for did, everybody's testimony. Uh, try to this is, change his deposition. Everyone's testimony gets picked did say by me. that at one point you said, I'm okay. Do you dispute it? I dispute it. Now, I never to dispute felt okay. it, you have to know everything you said, right? Like, I know everything I said, and I didn't say it. Are you saying you have a perfect <laughs> memory of what you said on that hill just after the collision? Yes or no? I knew. That's I'm, argumentative. No, it's not. Argumentative. That's a fair Overruled. question. Overruled. Yes or no? Those are These are actually good cross questions. Um, say yes or no, please. <laughs> question again, please. Yes. <laughs> do you agree that uh, these are good you questions? You do not have a perfect memory of what you s told others after the, in, in the one, two minutes, three minutes after the collision? Or do you have a perfect memory? Well, that word is so ultimate, perfect. No, right. The answer would be no, it's not perfect. Okay. So it's possible you said, for instance, Eric Christensen is going to testify, first witness this afternoon, that you told him, I'm okay. I'm looking you forward to seeing it? Christensen's testimony. I dispute it. I okay. never felt safe and like anybody was there to help me. And then I he, would not have said it. He's about to testify that not only he was there, but a ski patroller duo came over. One of them came over and said, do you guys need any help or words to that effect? Is there a question? And that you consulted there with it is. Ramon and then said, no. Do you dispute it? I absolutely would have said no. I never said safe. So I don't want to say what I would have said. I want to know if you remember. I, what you do said. Do you remember that? No. You, okay. I don't remember. In fact, answer. you don't even remember that ski patrollers came by. Oh, my God. Let True. him answer. No. I do not remember that. Yeah. Ever. It'll be interesting to see how the Deer Valley employees testify because they are seemingly the most neutral party in all of this we they're talked not about being your right sued. eye but your left eye also has uh some some severe vision loss is that true no uh, i see 2020 20 in that eye did you have a cataract in that eye i did and that cataract's been removed yes. since the ski collision yes okay and and is it lunchtime yet I'm ready for lunch. Anybody else? Chat, are you ready for lunch? I want to hear from the Deer Valley employees after lunch. Sanderson is going to come back onto the stand. His cross won't be finished. Uh, there's a report on February but 4th, the plane, But the defense wants to get into their case because of their his timing. His vision in his left eye is decreasing blind in defense right eye. Defense said they had uh, your left eye decreasing seven witnesses lined up for this morning. Is your left eye decreasing one year before the ski collision? 
increasing in visit. I want to hear from you, Valley. Prescription decreasing. Was your left I'm eye ready for decreasing? Nudges too. Yes, getting okay. less need for prescription. I know. I'm hankering not the visual some KFC. Now, in addition once to I, your once stroke, we started talking about him being Colonel Sanderson, it a uh, very impressionable. Your heart was not perfect. Do you agree? Before the ski collision, perfect. Of course, I couldn't agree with the word perfect. No. Palpitation. You had palpitations. Agreed. Had them most of my life. Yeah. No How many years? Okay. Forty years probably. And what's the lay term for palpitation? Is it just un um, it's unusual called, um, it's, beat? It's it's just a little out of sync that happens when I'm really tired or if I've been on the treadmill. Too when your long, heart gets just a little quirky, then, then it will get. A little funny syncope. It's called PCVs. So it, your your beats off. Is that fair to say? Yeah, oh, I paused this a couple nothing, times. Yeah, I'm going to go to one point two five. Okay. So and but you were on two for lunch. different. Uh, yes, high I just sped it up. Does that sound right? Yes. I forgot I and could because I paused. One didn't one wasn't adequate? You needed now both. Now I can. <laughs> we're going to his. I can explain if you want, Your Honor. This this event later changed. Witness, his, later uh, witnesses that to which this forms part of their opinion. Sure, his overall health, yes. There's no claim that his um, his heartbeat or anything was affected by this accident. Your Honor, he says this has utterly changed his life. Yeah, just, just a minute. Um, they're going to end up at the sidebar. Approach, please. All right, so they're going to sidebar. I'm going to speed sidebar up so we can zoom, zoom, and catch up. Um, and you see the plaintiff on the stand shaking his head as they're talking about his overall health. I'm surprised that his attorney didn't talk about his types of reactions and whether he's noticed, and none of his doctors talked about either, whether his reactions are, you know, what everybody would expect from him. Um, to try to explain some of the smirking that we saw during Gwyneth Paltrow's testimony, I'm really surprised they didn't ask him. Like if people told you that sometimes they say something and your facial expressions are maybe not what they would expect, because that's something that can happen um, as a response to this, but they didn't talk about it at all. So I thought Owens was going a, a good direction and then we have shifted direction, but we are riding this out until the lunch break um, to see, to see what happens. So let me answer some questions and then when we go to lunch i'm going to take a break of the stream and then we will come back for the afternoon stream y'all come back y'all come back after after lunch um we can actually Miguelina, do you want to populate the afternoon stream i think we'll probably be at like 2 30 central um by the time they break for lunch i would appreciate it thank you gp's version of the crash was more believable to me at this point and I think the problem is Sanderson didn't back away from what he remembers versus what he was told. Um, and so the flying through the air and stuff is a little, it, or feels a little exaggerated to what happened, but it, I think would come across more clear if he's like, look, I, I was knocked unconscious. I remember this. And then I remember this. And we recess at this time and return at one thirty. Okay. Thank you. And we are breaking for lunch to return at 1.30 local court time, 2.30 my time. So actually, Miguelina, let's do 2.25 uh, to give it a minute. I wanna, I'm wanna. i leaving this up to see if the court comes back to talk to the lawyers. Question isn't cross. Maybe seated. So oh. counsel, con consistent with the motion and limine ruling that the court gave at the, uh, before trial, um, Mr. Sanderson, you can certainly step down. I'm gonna slow this down a little. Oh, there, Paltrow's a, leaving. There, there were, it was a laundry list of medical issues and they were uh, medical excluded. issues. If they're relevant, they absolutely should come in. If they're not relevant, they should not come in. So there will need to be. I mean, I need I need from you an assurance that this is a conditional relevance uh, situation, and and that you will tie in the relevance later, and not just a vague statement from an General expert. General health. That this guy had a lot of health problems before. I mean, I need to know. Yes. Uh, it needs to be tied in. So maybe you want to look at the reports or depositions uh, to make sure Over that lunch. whatever it is that you're examining this witness on will be tied in later by a medical expert. Uh, as to the relevance, either before or after, I mean, either one of those would be relevant. James is sort of on the damages end, so I'll defer to him on the specifics. But we are talking when they say it's utterly ruined my life. That's, that's we're too about general. The whole package and aging no, is one sir. of the primary. Just normal aging is one of the primary issues for our experts, and so uh, we got to look at the whole package. Not 
how about this heart thing and how about this prostate thing and how about this um, we're, we will argue and our experts will back it is that that's the reason he is kind of slowly deteriorating progressive aging okay so, so take a look at what the opinions will be and if they're if you feel as though they're tied in um, then you can go into those areas thank you it seemed like there was one other issue okay I just want to kind of put this on the the stand. So I had, on the I had seven witnesses lined up. I was supposed to take over the case this morning at 9 a.m. Oh, gosh. Many are out of state. Um, plaintiff's counsel. Warning, warning. Owens is going to complain about his scheduling of witnesses. Sir, this is literally like the most central point of being a lawyer. I'm very ADHD. Scheduling witnesses made my scalp itch. It was so difficult. Scheduling is one of the hardest things in a case. Owens is going to bitch about it. Let's hear what he has to say. Um, plaintiff's counsel, I don't dispute everyone's working hard, but it has significantly thrown off my witness list to the Aww. point that I'm actually having to cancel witnesses and so that we can read their transcripts. Um, and some people, some of our experts in particular, flying in out of state, I can testify during this small window. And um, I last as of last night, they were going to be done at 10, then it was 11, and uh, now it's they lunch. still haven't rested. Okay. We were delayed today because of weather. True. I'm, I guess I'm not really blaming people except for... But you um, are. I still don't have the case. They're not ready to rest. Multiple assurances that they were going to rest on Friday. Thank you. Okay. And, and also for the record, the court didn't issue an order uh, concerning Correct. You know, when one case when must be rested and one other uh, must be rested. It's, I, I've been leaving it up to counsel to work that out. And this I, is part of being a trial attorney, like, Owens. Uh, everyone's doing the best they can. Everyone's working hard. I don't dispute it, but... It, it's hard when I have like kids flying in. Understand. It's you hard for you. That or should we just hold our peace? Right. Why don't we take lunch? Right. <laughs> Be back at one thirty. He asked, um, "Should you're, we respond?" You're getting a for the amount of trial time that's been used so far. Yes. Or hold our peace. As soon as we get to a working printer. Owens is just stamping his foot saying, what about my case, Your Honor? We haven't gotten our time with our witnesses. If you've got your witnesses scheduled that tightly, sir, you should have scheduled them for the next day. It is a known issue with trials. Um, I'm leaving the court feet up because I want to see Sanderson's height vis-a-vis -vis his attorney as he's exiting the courtroom. Um, because again, I don't know if in any world he was ever um, five, eight, Missy W Owens is doing the most every single time he's doing the most. And every single time, every single time he can complain, he's complaining. It's difficult. Yes. They said they would give you the case on Friday. Yes. But that's part of trial work. He's complaining about things that are a known part of what he's doing. Yes. They've got Gwyneth Paltrow's kids flying in. Yes, they are going to be missing school, but they're also family members. So if they need to bump back a day, they can probably bump back a day. This is not the court's problem. This is not the court's responsibility. The court did not tell the attorneys this. And I have seen attorneys delay. We've even seen that in some of these cases where it's like, oh, are you, are you riding this out to get to a break or to a lunch break or whatever? These attorneys seem to have been working pretty diligently. And one of the days they lost a complete hour because of Owens um, complaining on the record, going over things that had already been dealt with. So on both sides, they have had court time used for things that had already been decided for both attorneys. So I get his frustration, but also this is absolutely part of it. Scheduling witnesses is a part of the job. And there's a bunch of weather. I wouldn't be surprised if they had weather issues um, flying in and out anyway due to the storm there. So let's get to some questions. Let's do a quick recap. Let's, is my hair, my hair is getting fluffy. It is that time of year. It is that time of year where the hair is going to start to get fluffy. Maybe we'll just have to put it up for after lunch. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Oh, we didn't do our stretch break when the jury went out because they keep putting things on the record afterwards. So the jury's gone out. Wait, I wanted to do this one. Let's do both. Let's just, we're just gonna do a little, a little stretch break and then we'll do a quick little, quick little recap of this morning. We can do the recap with a music bed, I think. 
This morning, we are on day five of the Gwyneth Paltrow ski crash trial. The plaintiff testified this morning, as did his friend, Mr. Ramon, who testified about comments on a meetup post. The meetup post is the much, much described link that could not be clicked until the internet was like, sir, type it into a browser and use the Wayback Machine. It's really not that hard. The internet um, uncovered the meetup link that the defense attorney said was missing in his opening statement. It's like, gosh, we'd really love to see what was posted to the I'm Famous email. And now we have seen it. It was a discussion in the meetup group with the pictures that we'd already seen and then some comments under the pictures that we'd already seen. So Ramon testified to the comments that he made on the meetup post saying that they were him. And then Terry Sanderson started his testimony saying that this crash has completely changed his life. He unequivocally said that he did not crash into Gwyneth Paltrow, that she crashed into him, that he heard a scream that he tried to recreate, but said he couldn't, like somebody was completely out of control and about to hit a tree and die. And then he felt whack and then he was flying through the air. And then that's what he remembers. Other than at some point, and the timing of this was unclear, he looked over and saw someone passing by and was like, oh, I'm glad they're not involved in this crash. So that is his recitation of how this crash happened. He did not say whether that recitation came from organic memory or came from being retold through Ramon. Nobody's through his friend, Mr. Ramon. Nobody's really made this clear whether he remembers these things well. And then they started getting into on cross-examination him saying that he thought it was cool that he got hit by Gwyneth Paltrow, that he um, was, you know, seeing a therapist for anger management 10 years prior to this collision during his divorce when anger was really one of the changes that his daughters talked about a lot. It's one of the changes he talked about a lot. His temper is different. His anger is different. But he was in anger management at least 10 years before this accident. So how will the jury take all that information? Does it seem that he has had some changes Absolutely. Did we had a lot? Did we have a lot of doctors say that he has had changes? That his family noticed changes? Yes. But did Gwyneth Paltrow cause this collision? And are those changes due to this accident, or are they due in part to this accident, in part to normal aging? Are some of these things not actually changes, but the way that this plaintiff is? But Owens Cross came out as a, aggressive and a bit disorganized. And as Owens was getting more aggressive, the plaintiff was getting softer and softer in his testimony, as opposed to meeting um, Owens with anger. I don't know if Owens is trying to bait this, this particular plaintiff into getting angry. I imagine that he is because he wants the jury to see him, see him change. We'll see. So with this, I'm going to get to some of our questions and then take a lunch break, and I will be back with you after lunch. If you have not checked out Quick Bits, if you need a recitation of this case, I think it's only 17 minutes long. That's quick for me. So that is up on my Quick Bits channel. If you want to stay in the loop with everything that I am doing and where I am appearing and um, and when I am streaming this trial, lawnardalert.com will get you there. I don't think it went down earlier today when we sent you there. So thank you um, to my, well, to my hosting provider for not allowing my site to crash this time because the Lawnards have broken it about 6,000 times before. That's an exaggeration. It's been broken 100 times before. Yes, Owen, everything is done 100 times before. Let's get to questions. <music> Can, how can someone with documented TBI with brain function complications be cleared to testify? How can his testimony be relied upon? Well, nobody has challenged that he has the inability to testify. And so here we are. Here we are. And they are trying to probe his memory and we will see what happens. Um, looked like he took photos, video when GP testified. I didn't see that. Um, he wouldn't be allowed to take photos or video. That would be very interesting. He shouldn't really be on his phone in court, though. The parties have been on their phones. It's the only time he was present. And Owens did comment on that, didn't he? Saying you weren't present during the doctor's, um, during the doctor's testimony, either not just your daughter's testimony. Amber Am said, which side doesn't want the GoPro on? Um, 
the only fight over the GoPro was the fact that video doesn't exist and whether or not it had existed at one point. So neither side. This morning, the argument was really over how the jury is going to be told that this evidence of the link now exists and whose fault it might be. Um, Carol asked, why didn't Paltrow use her LA lawyers instead of this guy? Well, there could be a lot of reasons for that. One, these could be lawyers being paid by insurance. Two, you need lawyers that, or at least one lawyer that is local to this jurisdiction. Three, I think it would be a bad look for her strategically to bring in fancy, you know, big city lawyers into a smaller community. I think it would paint her as more of an outsider. I think having local lawyers who understand these jurors jurors better who understand this region better is a benefit to her so that she is more relatable. I don't know if Owens is maybe the right lawyer to make her seem more relatable because oftentimes for me, my opinion, he comes off as condescending. I think he comes off as condescending as hell. So I don't know if it makes her more relatable, but having um, a high powered legal team going against Mr. Terry Sanderson, who's 70 plus years old, is a bad strategic look for her. So there could be a lot of reasons. Um, Kalia said this quote investigation plus Congress's recent TikTok hearing proves how desperately we need young people in government. Oh, I agree with you. We need people who understand tech. I haven't gotten to watch the TikTok hearings. I very much hope to. I haven't even seen what the Supreme Court asked about the, the, the uh, bad spaniels of it all. This trial has, you know, we'll catch up with it after, but I... Tick, the TikTok hearing is something I will go back through and watch, possibly once I'm done binge watching VPR. Did you notice Gwyneth Paltrow's security detail keeps a close eye on Terry? I haven't noticed that, but I'm sure that they are. I wouldn't be surprised if anyone's a threat in that courtroom. Um, I think they want to know what he's up to, especially if, based on the other question, they thought he might have been taking photos or texts. Temp said convenient they found the texts that are written after days of the accident and time, they had to make a consistent story. I wonder why GoPro wasn't found or didn't exist. Did you guys believe his story about why GoPro didn't exist? Um, I feel like I did with Jeffy Heard. Don't care about the famous person, but do care about justice. This feels like a cash grab. And no matter how much I scoff at V scented candles, that's just not cool. Um, DHEC, I wonder how many feel the same way. And that's what they're going to play up to the jury, that this Sanderson has something to gain here. Gwyneth Paltrow only stands to lose. So why would she go through this trial if she didn't 100% believe what happened? I want to hear from the Deer Valley employees, just like I wanted to hear from the plaintiff's daughters. I want to hear what they have to say. How is their side so different from Mr. Ramon's testimony? I want to know. Um, Katie said, I swear it almost sounded like he was about to say, I hit then changed. I will need to go parse his testimony again. Felix Funky Fine said, I suffer from post-concussion and still remember my accident like it was yesterday, but then sometimes I can't remember my birth date, which is fair. Brains are brains are complex and, and funny with us sometimes. Christina Kay said, if he's all the way on the right, how is anyone on his left if he isn't in center? This is a very good point. Um, Luna Wolf said, I know everyone's different, but I've had a brain injury. Can't remember three to four days before and a week after a little surprise given the severity claimed. And again, I hear you, everybody's different, but I also wonder, cause he did say in his testimony when talking about the amount of time he was unconscious, he said, sometimes I try to fill it in and I wouldn't be surprised if he's trying to fill in the blanks as a witness, filling in the blanks is never good. You have to know what you know, see what you see, hear what you hear, and say what you don't know. And he doesn't seem comfortable saying what he doesn't know. So him admitting on the stand of filling in the blanks with his doctors is room where the um, room for the plaint, the defense for Paltrow, um, the defendant and cross plaintiff to explore. I don't know if they will. Dominic said, were there two crashes? These are all, these are two very different versions of the same crash. Think said, finally able to catch a live. Um, always in the replay crew, appreciate your love for us. I adore you guys. The Lawnards are the best. You guys are the best. Oh, by the way, we got to 711,000. Look at us. So thank you for doing the YouTube things. Marjorie said, gut wrenching. GP seems seemed more credible, but why doesn't she just give him big bucks money and save the Sanderson family? Is it going, it, is going to be brutal for them if he loses. 
I don't know how much the attorneys are charging if he loses. I think his medical has been covered by the VA. I don't know if it will be brutal for them, but that is the sympathy that the jury is told not to consider that they might very well consider. Why didn't she pay him? Probably because she doesn't think she's wrong. Like if you if you think that somebody is coming after you for something that's complete BS, it doesn't matter if you have the money, right? This becomes a matter of principle. If she did it, they should have been able to settle. But I think now this, thank you, Marjorie, for this question, because I have thoughts. Okay, I have thoughts. We have a minute. I think we now understand more about why this case didn't settle from the plaintiff's testimony. No one believed how serious my injuries were. He's talking to everyone who has had an unseen illness. It doesn't matter what it is. If people can't perceive what you're going through, the world can be unkind. I have dealt not only with neurodivergence, but with back injuries. When people can't see that you're in pain, um, like you have a, a broken arm and a sling or something, it's as if it doesn't exist. This happens to so many, and it can be absolutely debilitating, and no one, you, you don't look sick, right? And that makes it very hard. So he wants to be believed about the changes that he feels. I get it for Mr. Sanderson. I just don't know if Paltrow caused that to him, but this might be the reason it didn't settle. There's been lots of insults. I'm bummed that we haven't heard about that on cross. You feel insulted. You can't let this go. What insulted you so greatly? Lots of insults. This has been contrary to his values and no one believed how serious my injuries were. And he wants this jury to validate what he's been through, which is a tough thing because I don't know if this jury is going to validate what he has been through. What did you think about that? When he was saying, this is what it is. This is what it is. Um, it's very hard when people cannot see your injury and it's something we don't remember enough, right? It, it's just, it's something we don't remember. You never know what other people are walking through. And it doesn't matter if it's a physical injury, dealing with cancer, dealing with depression, dealing with other mental health. There are lots of times that we are carrying things that others cannot see. And I get that he wants to be validated. I don't know if court's the right way to validate him. Therapy, maybe, will help with that, but I don't know. I, I absolutely believe that Terry has had changes since this accident. I believe that this accident might have made him feel his own mortality, made him feel like he had a vibrant life and, and doesn't anymore. I understand that. I also understand that aging can be tremendously difficult and scary, and he's got problems with his foot, and he doesn't feel stable in the world, and I get it, but I don't know if Paltrow caused it. So I have empathy for him, but I don't know if she is to be blamed for what he's going through. And I just wonder if he wants to find someone to blame and someone to say, this isn't your fault. Because imagine how difficult it is to accept that this is what happened and this is where you are when he still doesn't doesn't want to accept that he's had these changes. He, he said it in his testimony. That's the other Terry that now lives inside me. Something has been done to him and he cannot process, he cannot process it. He cannot process it. Um, so with that, Kimberly said, Emily, you sound extremely biased towards Sanderson. Love you, but not like you. It's okay, Kimberly. There's others in the chat that think I'm incredibly biased towards Gwyneth Paltrow. I believe that he has had the impacts of a collision. I believe that there was a ski crash. Who caused the ski crash? I don't know. I don't know who caused the ski crash. I believe there was a crash and I believe he's had an impact of the crash and I have compassion for that. But I also have compassion for Gwyneth Paltrow. If he finds out it's her and three years later, it's like, you know, who's to blame for this, this accident that happened her, she's to blame. So pay me. And then from 2016 to now to drag somebody through court. I don't know. I think this jury could very, very easily come back and say, y'all had a collision on a ski run and that sucks. And we're sorry, but no one's at fault here. This was an accident. Y'all are 50-50 responsible. Everybody just walk away and pay for your own shit. And then if if Gwyneth Paltrow believes, um, as she, as she has testified, that he hit her, she's had to spend possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
to pay for a defense on a case that she thinks is a BS money grab because her attorney said in opening statement, this is BS. He shouldn't have said it, but he did. And then Sanderson believes that she stole his life from him. How do you settle that? You can't. There's no, there's no room to settle it. But here's the thing. Court can't fix it. And then I'm going to stop ranting and go eat lunch. Court can't fix this. Even if a jury hands him his verdict, then what? Then how do you move on? You've got to start healing before court and court doesn't heal everything. It's a tremendously difficult process to go through that can often be more dehumanizing than healing. It's a hard process. So I have empathy for him. I do, but I just don't know if she call if, if she caused this. Trial of a book advertisement scene acting. Wow. I trial of a book advertisement. I temp, I'm not quite sure what that means, but thank you. Um because that's how you get ants, said even a novice, modest skier who fell a lot. My number one thought was to control my legs as best I can to prevent serious injury, not people across the trail. Thank you for that. Um, Quinn Wicked said, bit behind, I'm not trying to body shame, but let me tell you, 40 pounds of weight makes a difference. It doesn't matter how tall. Um, 40 pounds of weight does make a difference. And he was, his weight is relevant to how he fell, but also his testimony on how he fell was that he remembers falling like this when all of the medical testimony said he had to fall on his side. Gwyneth Paltrow's version does talk about how he falls on his side. Nolene said, I was paralyzed in an accident with my six month old. That must have been, that must have been horrifically scary. And I'm not as traumatized as he seems to be. I could sit through both the criminal and civil trial. Nolene, you are a very strong human and people have different levels of strength. Um, and I'm sorry for that experience. It is, it is difficult. He, this person in their life is found where they're found with the capabilities that they have. Um, and that must've been horribly scary, but it also sounds like you have been able to heal. I don't know if Sanderson has sought what he needs to heal as a person. And I can kind of see why his daughters are like, I need him to heal. Required particular said, I wonder if someone hit him and he flew into her, but can't remember might explain the moan. And I, I, after hearing Gwyneth Paltrow's testimony, I, I hear the moan or groan as possibly being that he, he ran into her and then went, Oh, like he didn't understand that somebody was there. Cause he didn't see her. I don't know. Um, Talia said, I have blacked out from an injury before I can tell you from experience that I could hear well out, but could not see respond. Seemed like a long time ago to me. Reality was less than 15 seconds. And that's the other thing about time with injury. Um, what does purple pain feel like? I don't think we got an explanation of purple pain from him. Speaking as a TBI survivor, Sean C. Kate said, I can sound very articulate and begin to struggle with speech. Um, and we saw some of that confusion on cross. I don't know if it came across as true to all of you, but we saw some of that confusion on cross. Walk said, I thought the doctor said the broken ribs caused by the crash fell to the side. Yes. Um, but Sanderson is saying fell face forward, not to the side. But yes, the defense experts say he fell to the side on his arm and Gwyneth fell on top of him. And that's what she explained as well. Um, let's see. Michael said, shout out from the Chick-fil-A parking lot in South Nashville. <laughs> Thank you. I definitely need to go eat. Um, Heather said nerves versus adrenaline. I think he conflated the two um, because I guess it feels the same. Uh, Susanna said only one person in this courtroom deserves an Oscar. And it ain't him. Um, Crystal Fox said, I have had a brain injury and his story makes sense. I remember the incident before the accident and then blacked out and remember as soon as I came back to consciousness. Fair enough. Um, Phantasmic Ether said, Emily, they should have, they shouldn't have moved him. I agree with you, but the EMT didn't move him. He could have sustained a lot more injury. I agree with you, but the EMT didn't move him. He said some rando, he didn't use the word rando, came and grabbed him and got him to his feet. And he was saying he was okay. I, I agree. If his story went the way it went, um, you know, that he went face first and was unconscious face in the snow for minutes, the way that his friend described it, it's shocking to me that somebody would just be like, get you up to your feet. I'm, I'm interested to hear from the Deer Valley instructors. Uh, Faye said, no one believed I suffered when blinded by MS and in severe pain. 
I was a comm model uh, prior. Um, all else say, but you look so good. Oh, I was a comm model prior and all, everybody said you look so good. As if looks have anything to do with how you feel, right? It's like, oh, you look, but you look great. It's like, right, but miserable, um, which is hard too. Uh, I have a friend who passed from cancer and people would always comment on how thin she was. And remember I was in Los Angeles. So people would comment on how thin she was. Oh my God, you're looking great. What are you, what are you doing? You know, the way people do, what are you doing? And she's like, it's fucking cancer. Cancer is what I'm doing. She, she hated people commenting on her weight in that way because it just, um, it just reminded her of how sick she was. Um, Nope said, I think it could be part of Owen's strategy to make the other attorneys look incompetent. It would fit his personality and the female attorney, especially was already too casual with the witness. That attorney has a whole shtick, a whole shtick off topic, but love your lipstick color. Emily looks fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, I'm frustrated. His attorney rushed for the defense. Christy, I am too, but it looks, it makes them look accommodating. Like totally when dudes crash, their egos are bruised. So he wasn't crying, quote, nobody's helping me. Nobody's asking me. He doesn't have memory directly after the crash. Uh, fair point. And people like him really make it hard for people like me who are not exaggerating, but the doctors do not believe me. Thanks, dude. Um, Miss Wally, and that can be that can be hard too. Being believed is a is is a multifactorial uh difficulty, right? Thor said, EDB, can you talk about why a mistrial wasn't declared as soon as Owen said, there's a nurse in your jury? So in opening statements, no one objected and no one moved for a mistrial. Uh, also, there is a nurse on the jury. And so jurors are allowed to use their common experience to interpret things. Um, D. Trug said, as poor as Owens is, I still don't see how plaintiff has proved that GP is at fault. And that's the biggest thing. We don't get to damages until we know that Gwyneth Paltrow caused it. And we don't know that. Leslie Ann said he is invoke he is evoking some sympathy with uh from me with his testimony. I believe full well that he has and is suffering from the accident, but I haven't heard anything that makes me decide without a doubt that he was stuck struck and not vice versa. So this is not a without a doubt kind of a case, but we'll get there in the jury instructions. And the jury only has to agree that somebody is more than more than 50% at fault by three fourths. So the standard here is much lower, much, much lower, but I absolutely believe that he's suffering. I still don't know who's, whose fault, if any fault it is. So, oh my God, I have, oh, <laughs> Kyla said, oh my God, I have Mr. Waters. If it's on your paper, I have no reason to dispute that, but I just don't remember vibes. What is happening? That's exactly what happening. That's exactly what was happening today. So law nerds, don't forget to do the YouTube likey subscribey things. It is time for me to go and get some lunch. I will see you back here in just about an hour. The afternoon is already scheduled so that you can hop right over to that stream and we will go there. Robin Stanley said, isn't he the only one with an eyewitness? If the jury believes the eyewitness because the Deer Valley ski instructor showed up right after the collision and the aftermath of the collision is very different testimony to testimony. So the jury's going to have to decide who they believe in the aftermath of this collision. The stories are so different, or at least we're told that they are. We haven't seen those witnesses testify yet. We will see the Deer Valley people after lunch. And I'm very much looking forward to that testimony. So I'm glad this is a day that we can be here for the entire day. So with all of that, it is time for me to go. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being law nerds. Thank you for making this the number one place to watch live trials on the YouTubes. Bye. You can find all the law nerd goodies at lawnerdshop.com. Connect with me on social media at the Emily D Baker. And don't forget to check out my podcasts, The Emily Show and the new podcast, Quick Bits, summarizing everything I talk about on my Tuesday and Thursday live streams. You know, when you only have time for just the quick bits. <laughs>